Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Utility Sports, and I'm so excited for the beginning of day two of NBA free agency. We've already had a flurry of moves today that I'm really excited to talk about and discuss and share my thoughts. Make sure you smash that like button if you have been enjoying the live streams here at Utility Sports. I'm so excited to be covering more NBA free agency, and we've got a poll here that I'm going to put up on the channel here. I want to see your guys' thoughts. <coughs> I put it in the uh, comment section there. Let me make sure that that is up and working for you guys. Uh, yeah, it is now. I think you should be able to see that poll now. Go ahead and vote on there. Where do you think Kevin Durant will be playing next season? Do you think it's going to be with another team? Do you think it will be the, with the Phoenix Suns, Miami Heat, or does he stay in Brooklyn for at least one more year? We will see. Roll number 27, welcome to the stream. Miami Heat highlight says, let's go Heat. I love that. Let's bring some energy. <coughs> Tyler Carver says Memphis. Mr. Rudy Poo says Memphis Grizzlies. Too many young assets. Jamin bringing some hope for the Lakers. We'll see exactly where he goes. Mary Ortiz says, and we're back. Yes, we are with more live stream coverage. Alex, welcome back again today as well. He says, Alex, or uh, good morning. I hope, well, first of all, good morning to all of you guys. He says, I hope Katie winds up in Portland. I'd love to see him and Dame tear it up together. Those two would be a lot of fun to watch. Two killers for sure. Brian says, the Bulls. Anthony says, hi, good morning, Anthony. Glad to have you in here. Filex says, yes, sir, day two. Love your content. Hashtag Blazers. Let's get some Blazers hype in the chat if you're a Blazers fan. Roll number 27 says, the Pelicans. Definitely a possibility, one that maybe we didn't talk about enough yesterday. You know, last night laying down, going to bed, I was thinking about the Pelicans a little bit. Maybe they're a team that could be a, a dark horse here for KD. Then King Carr says, what's taking so long on Kyrie to Los Angeles? I think the Nets right now are trying to weigh out all of their options. To me, if they were going to make a move, they, would want, they should want to make a move with other moves in mind. So you want to trade Kevin Durant? Go ahead. But you should have an idea of what your package for Kyrie is going to look like and try and marry those two things together so that you have a good understanding of what your overall roster is going to look like and not move one move after another. Filex says, it's afternoon in Europe. Well, uh, buenas tardes. Good afternoon to you, uh, Filex. Grom says, it is, is it crazy for a Thunder fan not to want KD? No, I don't think so, Grom. I think, honestly, with where your guys' franchise at, it would be um, – it's hard to like get ready to buy now uh, just with what the team is looking like. Jamin says LeBron and Katie would be fun to watch. Yes, they would. They'd be really good together. Uh, those two players. It's like a perfect pairing. Honestly, true sports live says Aaron holiday to the Hawks one year deal. Yeah. He just signed right before I went live here. We'll talk about that signing. Uh, I think it's a pretty good backup move for them behind DeJounte and also Trey young. Mr. Rudy Pooh says what dark horse team do you think may get KD? One's not floated yet. Um, well, there's been a, pretty much every team's been floated. We've talked about pretty much every team. I, I think a dark horse team that would maybe really want to pull the trigger is Utah, which I know sounds crazy. I get we haven't really explored a Utah trade too much. Think about it from Utah's perspective. They are a team that probably is not a landing spot for most stars in free agency. Uh, they're not really a team that's going to have good draft picks. Why not mortgage the whole future? Maybe even throw Gobert back at the Nets and say, okay, let's get Kevin Durant with Donovan Mitchell. Let's plan to work it out like that. And I guess that's one team that jumps to mind. Bilex wants to know why Yusuf Nurkic isn't signing. Uh, they're just waiting on him. They've got bird rights. So what they're going to do is they're going to try and use as much of their cap space as they can. They're going to try and use up all their money and then re-sign him to go over the floor. ATG Rico says, why are the Pacers not pursuing Aiton, I don't get it. Probably because they feel pretty good about Miles Turner. I think Miles Turner is a really good pairing with Halliburton and Duarte in his own right. So I don't think they need to push necessarily for Aiton. Uh, and, and it depends on what money Aiton wants. On uh, And maybe they feel like Phoenix will match, honestly, too. So we'll see. Sporting Game says, if Sexton's to Mavs, I'm, I'm not going to cry. JB get the money from New York. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for Brunson. Uh, I'm glad that he got his contract. It's well-deserved. Anthony Manzano says, for me, the Murray trade to the Atlanta Hawks makes no sense. Now they have two ball-dominant players. I don't think it's going to work. Look what happened with the with Brooklyn when they had Katie Irving and Harden. 
Well, that team was going to win, Anthony. That that Katie Irving and Harden team, when they all played together, they were un, un, almost unbeatable. Uh, honestly, that team was really, really talented, and they didn't even have their chemistry yet. Uh, I think Atlanta having two ball dominant guards is good. Uh, you know, there's there's nights where Trey Young plays like 34 minutes a game, which means 14 minutes of the game they don't have a, a good ball dominant player out there. That won't be an issue now. Now they always have a ball dominant player on the floor who can run their offense get shots for themselves and for others. That's the most valuable thing in all of basketball. If you have players who can create off of a live dribble, you're in a good position. Look at the Rockets. Everyone said the same thing about Chris Paul and James Harden. Ultimately, yes, they never won a championship, but that team got to the Western Conference Finals in a game seven against the Warriors, and if Chris Paul doesn't get hurt, they might win that game. They, having two really good ball-dominant players is not a bad thing. It really isn't. Alex says, also, can we have some... <clears throat> <clears throat> Alex says, let me see if I can find it here. I lost it. There we go. Alex says, also, can we get some hype about the fact that my jazz got out of the luxury tax with the moves they made yesterday and have actual flexibility now? They do. And that's the uh, the beauty. They're trading Royce O'Neal for a first round pick. Also, that's a huge win uh, for Utah. That's a really big one. ATG Rico says, they seen what he could be with Chris Paul. He could even be better with Halliburton, that's funny about Aiton. Uh, you know, I think he'd be really good with a, uh, with Halliburton. Uh, I think that Chris Paul is probably a little bit better of a pick and roll point guard than Halliburton. I don't think that's you know slanderous to say. Uh, I do really like Halliburton in the pick and roll though. Uh, a lot of people looked at him as a two guard, which I never really understood because at Iowa State he was their lead guard and did a really great job facilitating the offense. Uh, and I think he's someone who's got a lot of room to grow yet. Mister Ray says if a deal <coughs> with Kyrie or Westbrook does take place who's the potential third team involved. Also, good morning, boys. Well, good morning to everyone. And for Kyrie Westbrook, there doesn't necessarily need to be that third team. Let's say, you know, the Nets go with some young players and a deal for Kevin Durant and get a, a collection of draft picks. For Kyrie, on an expiring deal, I think the best thing to look at is the trade for Kawhi Leonard, where the Spurs got DeMar DeRozan, Jakob Pertl, and a first. It's not like you get a ton for a really good player on an expiring deal. You really don't, to be honest. So for the Lakers, give up Westbrook, Taylor Horton Tucker, probably that 2027 first. And maybe since that first is so long out, maybe the 2029 first as well. That way, Brooklyn has some more draft picks to play with. And they've also got uh, a young player there in Taylor Horton Tucker. And I think Russ could actually be valuable for, for Brooklyn. Right now, they're not in a position where they want to tank uh, simply because Houston has most of their picks. So Westbrook, who is a good player still, uh, do not get super low on Westbrook. He's an, he's an okay player still at this point. On his own team, he can be valuable still. So I think Brooklyn could you know make that work just between the two squads. Adrian Moreno says, do you think the Martin Twins are obtainable for the Kings? Um, Maybe. I, I don't know if I see it happening, though. Sport Game says Portland was underrated. They have depth. They've done a, a really good job, uh, honestly, with the Gary Payton, the second signing. I like GP2 there a lot. Uh, very good move for them. Bob Charlie says, new subscriber. I appreciate the love and potential you see in the Toronto Raptors. They will be competitive for years to come. Yes, they will be. Scotty Barnes is the truth. I really loved it when they drafted him. I know some Raptors fans were undecided on that. I know a lot of them wanted Jalen Suggs, the Minnesota kid, to come up to the north a little bit further. Uh, and ultimately they made the right decision. Scotty Barnes, I loved it for them. I gave him an A plus on draft night when they took him. Uh, and some Raptors fans were a little hesitant about that, but I think after a year, all Raptors fans are feeling pretty good about what they got. Lil Brissy says, Hey, glad you're back streaming today. Since Gary Harris gone now, you see Raptors signing any backup guards out there. Let me go ahead and pull up some of the backup guards. Uh, I've been trying to keep in mind all of the uh, free agents, but it obviously gets to be pretty tough by this point of free agency because you know, we've had like 35 transactions and I'm trying to keep track of everything. Let me pull up all of the guards right now uh, and just go through some of the options that I think could work for Toronto. I mean, out there still, you're, you're getting diminished returns here now at this point with what's out there. A lot of the key players have either re-signed or signed elsewhere at this point. I think Bryn Forbes could be helpful off the bench. I, I don't believe he has signed yet. Um, Alfred Payton in like a, a backup guard role where he's a defensive minded guard that could be valuable. Uh, not like it's a great thing, but it could be valuable. That's kind of what I see. Otherwise, it's it's pretty thin pickings out there, uh, Brissy. But hopefully that answers your question. 
Tyler Carver says, do you feel Ingles will make an impact for the Bucs? Not within the first couple months of the season, but maybe closer to the playoffs. Uh, just having another depth wing is valuable, especially one who's a good locker room presence. So even if he's not playing super well, he'll be valued in that locker room. Shaw says, Daryl is the GOAT, Kevin Durant to Philly. We'll see, Shaw. If that happens, that would be crazy. Dathy says, thoughts on the Blazers getting another guard with the GP2 signing. Really like that. I, they, I've they i been saying it on the channel for a while. Uh, you know, I'd floated out the idea of trading for Lou Dort, uh, trading pick seven for Dort and 12. I thought that would have been a nice move for them because I thought they needed to get someone who could defend guards. Well, they got it with Gary Payton the second. They, they now have Jeremy Grant, Gary Payton II, and Josh Hart's a really great uh, offensive rebounding wing and defensive rebounding wing. They, they've got a good culmination of size and athleticism and now quickness with GP2, and he's got really lengthy arms. I think Portland fans are going to love Gary Payton II. They really are. He's a, a phenomenal addition. I think the Mitten's going to be a really nice player for Portland coming off the bench behind Simons and Dame. They needed a defensive-minded guard. I think we're going to see a lot of split minutes between Damon and, and Simons this year simply to make sure the offense is flowing. Uh, and honestly, I, I think that Peyton's is one of the perfect players to put next to those two guys. Jamin Mason says, Tyler Carver, good role player for 10 to 15 minutes, right? That's that's kind of what um, Ingles will probably play. He'll, he'll fit into a small role probably right away coming from the injury. We'll see if there's any um, you know setbacks and stuff like that, but ultimately we'll see. Mr. Rudy Poo says, I think a dark horse is the 76ers, and B was reported to have said exhaust all options. Well, if that's the case, you know, they're going to make a run, but ultimately they don't have as many draft picks. So even if even if Philly's willing to give up everything that they have, it's probably going to have to include Tyrese Maxey, uh, and that sounds like something that is a little less likely. Mighty Messer says, saw the Bridges' wife picks. Uh, let me look at this. Uh, again, I lost it. Sorry. Mighty Messer says, sell the Bridges wife picks. Man, he's in some trouble and needs help. Beautiful woman, but he regular beats her and in front of kids. Yeah, that was, um, I saw those pictures as well. Definitely uh, something that is not a good look for the NBA, for the Charlotte Hornets, for the Miles Bridges as a person. Uh, that is terrible what he did. Uh, and it's honestly embarrassing. So uh, I hope that, you know, there's some legal action that takes place that takes care of everything. Daquan Davis says Houston Rockets doing good. I think they're in a good spot right now. They got those draft picks. They're reaping the benefits. Angel Law says first takes of the KD trade is going to require three, maybe four teams. It could, but it's not like it's a requirement. It probably will need to just simply because there's going to be a lot of moving pieces. And sometimes teams are trying to position themselves based off of that. So Angel, I think that there's, you know, a good chance that we see three or four teams, but it's not an actual requirement um, in terms of necessary. I mean, if the Suns find a way to work out an Aiton and Bridges sign and trade to Brooklyn, they could just do that straight up with picks. Joshua says, hats off to this guy live streaming for hours. Thank you. Would still want KD to OKC. Josh, I like the, the hype there for Kevin Durant. Uh, hopefully it would be fun to watch him go back to the Thunder. It would be absolutely crazy. Imagine both imagine both Russ and KD go back to Oklahoma city in the same offseason. That would be nuts. Raul says, I don't think you count out Masai when it comes to making a big splash, especially when KD with KD being on the trade block. The only issue is KD can request a trade again. And that's the thing, you know, everyone's talking about, Oh, well, he's got four years on his contract. There's a reason Brooklyn feels pressured to trade him. You know, other, other, another team that gets him doesn't mean it's a guarantee that, you know, everything's going to go, uh, you know, peachy and, and everything's going to work out super well. Make sure you guys vote on the poll in the channel as well here. Bob says, Mr. Rudy Poo, if that were the case, Embiid is on his way to Brooklyn. Uh, that's a funny one there. Anthony Manzano says, let me clarify what I'm talking about. Let's say they have to play both Murray and Young at the same time. There's only one ball. How are they going to get equal amount of touches? It's not about equal. Uh, I don't think that ultimately DeJounte is going to care when Trey has the ball. And I don't think Trey is going to care when DeJounte has the ball. Trey Young is an elite spot up shooter. And this gives Atlanta's offense a little bit more variation to it. They can run Trey Young off, off some screens now because they have another reliable, consistent ball handler. It's a, it's a really great blessing, honestly, especially if Trey Young buys into that role, which I think he's going to be willing to because he understands and recognizes how good of a player DeJounte Murray is. And for DeJounte, He's going to be able to you know, be that defensive guy that we've seen from him in the past because there's going to be less of an offensive load on him. This maximizes both of them. They're both going to be a little bit more rested. 
each and every night is not going to be as much of a battle for each individual player. I, I really think it's good. Uh, you know, obviously, when you think about players, you you picture every single play, the ball's in that player's hands. That's not really how the actual NBA plays, especially when, when transition's involved uh, in the course of throughout the game. There's moments where other players are dribbling, other players are taking shots. You know, Murray and Young are going to work just fine together. Jack Bo says, how do you feel about Jokic getting the highest contract in league history? Uh, it's hard not to give a two-time MVP the uh, richest deal ever. So, you know, I, I think Jokic has his flaws, especially we see them in the postseason defensively. Uh, you have to employ him in drop coverage because of his lateral mobility questions. And for me, that's a that's a massive issue. It is. But at the same time, like, you don't really have much of a choice. He's too good offensively to not to not keep. True Sports Live says also you can have Holiday on the floor and give DeJounte and Trey rest, but I think it's more of a depth move. Yeah, Holiday's not going to play a ton. He'll probably play like 15 minutes a night. The, the nice thing here now is you have another – you now, you have a third ball handler in case there's ever an injury that like, oh, well, if, if Trey Young goes down for 10 games, DeJounte can be the starting point guard and you bring Aaron Holiday off the bench – or vice versa, right? Trey Young would be the starting point guard, and then Holiday would come off the bench. But realistically, those two guys are at, at pretty much all times, as long as they're doing the job right there in Atlanta, uh, and as long as they're making the right decisions, one of those two will always be on the floor, which is valuable. Bilek says, what are the Blazers doing with Josh Hart because the backup guard is now filled with GP2? Don't look at Josh Hart as a guard. He honestly plays more like a power forward who can pass. Uh Josh Hart is not a point guard or a, a backup to Josh Hart's a, a small forward or a power forward uh, in terms of his skill set. He rebounds, uh, he defends, and that's what he's going to be. He, they're looking at him the same way I look at him as a, as a small forward or power forward type. And they're planning on probably, if I had to guess, their starting lineup probably looks like Damian. They've got then Simons at the three. They're probably going to start Nasir Little at the four, Jeremy Grant, and at the five, Yusuf Nurkic, and they'll bring GP2 off the bench for the guards. And for the forward spot, they'll bring Josh Hart off the bench. That's what I would think. Delusional Pelicans fan says, Zion back. I'm sure that Pelicans fans are really excited about that. Sporting Game says, Holmes and Barnes to Mavs for the green Bertans and two second-round picks. Who says no so Wood can play the four? Um, Holmes and Barnes. I, I think that the, uh, the Kings say no to that. I think... Uh, honestly, we have a better shot of just getting Rashawn Holmes. They're not going to trade Harrison Barnes. Uh, I think they want to keep Barnes. If they're going to move anybody, it would just be Rashawn by himself. Uh, you are love says uh, Mitchell Robinson re-signed. Uh, definitely uh, a good signing for New York. I like the way that they managed their cap space situation for the most part. I don't, you know, I think trading Alec Burks away was kind of tough to swallow. Uh, I think that they could have had, you know, better options there ahead of them to clear up some of that money for Brunson. But ultimately, they have now Brunson, Mitchell Robinson, Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett. They have Isaiah Hartenstein off the bench. I mean, this team is pretty solid. They've, they've gotten better this offseason. You know, people people are going to focus on the overpay on Brunson, which it is a slight overpay for sure, about $4 million more a year than I would have wanted to pay him. But ultimately, he's a good player. Jalen Brunson's good, and I think his stats are all going to take a huge jump forward playing for New York as well. Eric Schaefer says, Hornets need to join – with Suns, Nets, and get eight and somehow come on. We'll see if they can pull something off. That would be absolutely crazy to see if they could find a way to pull that off. Andrew Ford says if there's a third team, it would be the Hornets. That would make some sense. Otherwise, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if we see the Spurs get involved, um, maybe try and send out a player, like say Yaka Pertle back to either Phoenix or back to Brooklyn uh, and try and pick up a first rounder in that type of move. Kind of like what we saw with the Cavaliers sending out a first to get Jared Allen Maybe the Spurs can be the team sending out a, a a young center who's you know only 26 years old at this point and, and see if they can get a first rounder back for him. Welcome everyone to the stream. There's 171 of you in here. We're only at 26 likes though. Let's try and get those likes up to 75 likes, which means you gotta go smash that like button right now. Jared Noli says, uh, "Oh, Jared, welcome to the stream. Thank you for all the comments too. I, I read all of your comments and a lot of really great uh, stuff you add in there." He says, GP2 is a great move for the Blazers. What bigs are still left for us to get besides Nurk? So besides Nurk, I mean, Hassan Whiteside's there, which I don't know if they want to go down that road again. Uh, you know, they've already had him once. I'm not sure if that's something they're going to really be interested in. So looking at the other centers that are out there, 
Um, with Nerlens Noel already off the, the table from a trade, Bamba's already signed McGee, Hartenstein all, all signed, Deadman and Drummond found homes, even Damian Jones and DeAndre Jordan even found a home, which I would never have guessed. You know, I think out there, one that I would kind of like actually for, for Portland is Luca Garza. I know that sounds a little laughable, but uh, I think giving them a little bit of offensive punch off the bench from the big man spot would be solid. Now, I, I think he's more of a depth big than a number two big. So maybe if you want to go with the DeMarcus Cousins signing, that could make some sense as well. I think that would give them a solid playmaker out of the big man spot uh, behind Nurkic, which could be valuable for them as well. Mr. Rudy Pooh says Russ plus Ben. It would probably be the most uh, hated team in history, but uh, D- Dustin Reynolds says that offense would be terrible. You know, I don't know. I don't know if that offense would be terrible. It, it's not a, like a playoff offense or anything like that, but they're going to get out and run. They're going to be really good in transition, and, and they're going to be able to, you know, beat a lot of people athletically. Uh, that's the that's the one thing about Russ and, and Ben Simmons. You know, a lot of people love to hate on them with the, the lack of shooting. If you put three shooters around those two guys, if, if you find a big who can shoot a little bit, they're not in a terrible spot there. Now, are they going to make the playoffs or, or, you know, win a playoff series? No, probably not. But if the decision is to not tank and, and stay at least competitive, Russ plus Ben Simmons can, can win you 35 plus games. Uh, it, it could for sure. Jack Bo says, thank God the Raps didn't get Suggs. Angel Law says, first take said KD trade. Yeah, we talked about that already. I, Iro Misavi says, W stream. Let's get some W's in the chat. Go ahead, spam some W's down there. Reverse and spin says, Phoenix or the Blazers for Kevin Durant. Mason says, thoughts on Kyle Anderson signing. For the Minnesota, that was a really nice signing. I think Minnesota needed to find some forward help. Uh, you know, I they they kept Torian Prince around. Uh, and the fact that they got Kyle Anderson on a similar contract in terms of length and money. Uh, is an absolute steal. Kyle Anderson's much better than Torian Prince, and I think is honestly a very nice fit next to Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards. It gives them a different pace of play. It's funny, D'Lo kind of plays a little bit slower as well. <clears throat> so we're going to have two players there who play you know, a little bit more methodical next to a player like Anthony Edwards, who seems like he's shot out of a cannon at certain moments with that athleticism. Mighty Messer says Detroit is at 15 players now, but have 9 million in cap space would need to trade or cut a guy to add another. They And they could do that. There's, you know, some guys on minimums and stuff that they could move off of that wouldn't really hurt their long-term financial picture. Reverse and spin says Mitch is back with the Knicks. Knicks are doing better than last year. Playoffs. I'm not sure they're a lock to make the playoffs. I think everything kind of depends on what happens here with Brooklyn. Uh, if Brooklyn trades Kevin Durant and Kyrie to teams in the East, then the East becomes difficult. Now, if they trade them out of the East to a Western Conference team, well, then you have to feel pretty solid if you're New York, that at least had a shot at making the play-in. The issue, though, Atlanta's better. Charlotte should get better just because they're young and you know getting a little bit older. Well, it depends on what happens with Miles Bridges, though. We'll see what happens with them. But otherwise, the top teams in the East are still kind of some of the top teams in the East. So uh, it's going to be tough. Killer Bean wants to know how I felt about the Andre Drummond signing. Really nice signing for the uh, for the Chicago Bulls. They needed a backup big and a quality one, and they used it. Uh, they used part of their mid level exception to get him. Uh, I think, you know, to guarantee you get a guy like Andre Drummond is well worth it. Uh, he's one of the elite offensive rebounders in the entire NBA. Players like him just aren't easily attainable. Usually, you can't find a guy who's capable of averaging double digit rebounds for near the minimum, uh, and and that's really valuable. I think that's a really good get. For the Chicago Bulls. Drummond has his flaws, but that's why you're bringing him off the bench behind Vucevic. Jack Post says if Portland go, gets KD, are they serious contenders? Yes. You know, if they have Damien and if they have Dame and KD, yes, they're they're serious contenders. Mighty Messer says, I think the league knows that what is at stake as far as Houston getting way too. Uh, as far as Houston getting, let me see. I lost it again. I always lose yours, Mighty. I'm sorry. Um, as far as uh, as far as Houston getting way too much benefit of Brooklyn falling, they will find a way to work out deals to keep Brooklyn competitive. Maybe. We'll see. Dustin Reynolds says, Clay, Kaminga, Moody, three first for Kevin Durant back to Golden State. Do not do that if you're Golden State. I don't think that's worth doing. Uh, reverse and spin says, John Moran signed an extension. He did. Reverse and spin also said, Bruce Brown to the Nuggets. Let's talk about Bruce Brown to Denver. I think that's a very good signing, and I'm going to plug our Twitter here. 
Go follow us on Twitter. Link is in the description uh, at the very top of the description. Go give us a follow over there, especially if you're on mobile. Nice and easy. Just click the link and hit follow. But when it comes to Bruce Brown to Denver here, the reason why that's such a good signing, he's very active with and without the ball. Uh, and I think his activity is going to be really nice for the Denver Nuggets. He cuts without the basketball. He's really improved as a shooter. Now it's very low volume, but he's become a little bit more reliable. Not, not that I would consider him a shooter, but he'll knock down some threes, which is valuable. And the other thing is when he does have the ball, he's really active with it, looking for dribble handoffs to, to screen into. And that's going to open up the floor for Jamal Murray. I think that's going to be a really nice move. Honestly, not only for Denver, but I also think Bruce Brown, I think he's going to excel in a role like that. Jack Bo says 8 and 100% not going back to Phoenix now with the D-Book Supermax. Definitely does change some things there. Alex says, wait, so what exactly happened with Bridges? So Miles Bridges uh, beat his wife, essentially. Uh, and it's really sad. Uh, and honestly, it's condemnable uh, for Bridges. I, it's ridiculous. It, players and, and people in America should not be doing that. It's just... It's unfathomable to me, the fact that that people and men specifically do that. So real shame on Miles Bridges there. Mr. Rudy said MJ might be the worst owner in basketball on par with Dolan and Sarver. You know, he's he's figuring it out. Mighty Messer says MJ makes money. He owns to make money, not to win. True. Joe Mave says, thank you for reporting. Hope you got a lot of sleep. I, I got some, not a lot, but I got some. So we'll just uh, we'll make it work. Jazz says, what I missed, just Gary. Yeah, Gary, um, and then we had a few other signings like Bruce Brown to the Nuggets. Uh, and there was a couple others in there uh, that aren't coming to mind right now. But I am excited for sure. Definitely excited for the, um, <laughs> for the uh, Denver Nuggets getting uh, Bruce Brown. Shaw says, as a Sixers fan, we would give up Max if it means getting KD. Everything except King James and Joel. Joel is up for grabs. I mean, maybe, but giving up Max, he is a that's a big loss. It is. So, like, I get you probably have to, but that's my, I don't know. I don't know if I would. People, I don't think people really understand that Kevin Durant's about to turn 34 years old. Um, he'll be 34 before he plays another game in the NBA. So... Like, yeah, you probably still do it, but I, he's 34. He's got multiple knee injuries and, and feet injuries. I, I mean, I don't know. BS Express says, thoughts on Pacers being third party of Kevin Durant trade using cap space and getting a young wing in return. Uh, Pacers could definitely look to do that. Um, I would love for them to add Mikhail Bridges uh, in a deal if they could find a way to do that. It's just going to be tough to really execute something like that. Big J says, hey, riddle me this. What would the Wizards do with John Collins given their current as of today's roster? I don't know. They they always have too many forwards. So if they go and get John Collins, I'll be even more confused. Uh, I don't know if John Collins is really that good of a fit into Washington unless they maybe trade back Denny Avdia um, and, and something. But, I, again, I don't know if I love that. Nas King says, I hope. KD goes to Portland. Or Miami, but the Heat can't give up Bam. Yeah. Uh, well, the Heat... The, there's one little niche thing here. If the Nets find a Ben Simmons trade, they could give up Bam. So it's not all not all hope is lost on that, but it, it's very unlikely. Our reverse and spin says Rubio to the Cavs. Really like that signing. He he found a home there in Cleveland. I'm really happy about that for them. Reverse and spin says Cat extended, Zion extended, Jaw extended. Everybody getting a bag. Yes, and Bradley Beal as well. So everyone getting the bag for sure. Tyler Carver says, thoughts on Mitch Robinson overpay? No, I don't think so. I kind of pictured him in that $14 million a year range, so he got $15 million. If, if you're talking about $1 million difference, it's really not an overpay. Uh, I thought he was going to get about 14 he got 15 It's about kind of right where I thought he would. I uh, can't trade Simons until December. That is true. That's why people have been talking, people who've been saying Simons in a, a trade because of that salary doesn't really work. Mighty Messer says, GP2 and Josh Hart play way bigger than they are makes you very versatile. Yes, it, yes, they do. Uh, and that it, it helps them a lot. GP2 can guard wings and and guards, and Hart can guard guards and wings. So it's it's valuable. Joe Mape says Denver needs to make moves to win now with Jokic. He needs a Robin. He's got a Robin. He's got uh, Jamal Murray. Once Jamal Murray's back, we're going to remember how good he is, especially those two in the playoffs. Those two make magic happen in the postseason. They're going to be good. Don't worry about Denver. 
Lightskin says Zion got hungry <laughs> as soon as he inked the deal. Yes, he did. He's going to he's gonna celebrate with some food. No question about that. Why So Serious says, I know you were harsh with Spurs for trading away Murray. Do you still feel the same way after multiple reports saying he told organizations he wouldn't resent? I sort of do, but but to a lesser extent, obviously. Um, I think that, you know, I still think there could have been more value out there. I still would have liked them getting a younger player who is proven uh, to a certain extent. You know, if you're getting a 20 year old that has shown some flashes, I, I like that. Uh, it's, I think it's better than just taking blind picks. Uh, if you can get a young player in there, that would have been valuable to me. But still at this point, um, I, I, it's, it's a much better deal knowing now that he wasn't going to extend likely. Then, you know, instead of a D, which was very harsh uh, and honest, it was my honest opinion at the time. Now, I, with that, I, I think I would change it to a C or a C plus, just given the fact that, you know, I still think they could get more. I still think that there was more out there probably for them if they were patient with it and, and really went through the process. But they decided uh, at this point that, you know, they pulled the trigger on DeJounte and, and they got three first for him. And it's it's not the end of the world that that. Charlotte pick is, you know, protected top 16. So that's, it's not that valuable of an asset to me, but Andrew says no market for Rashawn Holmes. I, I think that teams out there would like to have Rashawn. <laughs> Mavs made Theo Pinson a priority. So uh, Theo Pinson staying with the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, I definitely like that for Dallas. Nas King says, where did Drummond go? He went with the Chicago Bulls. Lightskin says, I just want to see how that works on the court feel like Randall will get casted out if he isn't able to mesh with the rest of that unit. He can't get away with trying to shoot long twos on the team. We'll see what happens. Uh, I, I hope that they uh, they move off from him because I, I didn't want them to keep him even after his all-NBA season. So that's my that's my thought. Fuzzy Simpleton says, good morning. Portland had an interesting day yesterday. Yes, they did. I, I really like the GP2 signing for them. I think that they're in a very good spot now. Uh, I like Portland. They've got Shane Sharp probably coming off the bench in year one. They've they've got a blend of athleticism and length now and defense, and they've still got the offense. So it, I like it quite a bit. Joe says, I smashed the like button. That's good. Everyone else needs to smash as well. 250 people watching, only 71 likes. Let's go ahead and get up to 100 likes. Nas King says, where did Bamba go? He stayed with Orlando. Alex Duro says, what other moves should the Mavs make this offseason? What do you think of Sexton to the Mavs? I don't want Colin Sexton. Uh, I, I think that he's going to be an overpay. Um, and if we're not going to keep Brunson around, I, I think switching to a different player in Sexton doesn't really make much sense if we're going to pay him similar to money, similar money to what we would have been, been paying Jalen Brunson. So ultimately, I don't really want Brunson. He's a good young player. I think he's underrated, but I don't think he necessarily fits what the Mavs need. I would prefer the Mavs go after a little bit more size and athleticism uh, and maybe get like a, a wing or a bigger guard or a, a, not a bigger guard, but a big, like an actual big. I know they already got JaVale, but I I would prefer another big. Lightskin says, how is DeAndre Jordan able to ink a contract day one though? <laughs> is he topping off the, the front office? Honestly though, I don't know why DeAndre Jordan got a contract on day one. I do not understand at all. Why is the series says Colin Sexton or Jalen Smith to the Spurs? I think that Jalen Smith to San Antonio would be pretty solid for them. Uh, Sexton, I would I would like that for them. But I'm not sure if they're really in the appetite to make that move. Drummond's a good deal for the Bulls because they needed defense and, and rebounding. Yes, they did. That's exactly right. I completely agree with that. We have a dono donation in here. So huge thank you uh, to Big J52 said, this man is a legit bucket of basketball knowledge. Please help out with the likes. Thank you, Big J, for that. A uh, huge $5 super chat from him. Huge thank you. Uh, and I really appreciate it. My Holy King says GM Utility Sports. Uh, I'm trying my best. Atlanta Analyst says, yo, good morning, my guy. Good morning, Atlanta Analyst. I'm uh, excited about some of the stuff for the future here that we're going to – you guys you guys will see what's going on here in the in the near-ish future at some point soon. And he said, have you said, said anything about Lonnie to the Lakers or the Spurs possibly moving Doug McBuckets? Uh, I think for – Lonnie to the Lakers, it was a solid signing. Uh, they needed youth and athleticism. They got it there with Lonnie. Uh, and when it comes to Doug McBuckets, I, I think there's going to be some suitors, but we'll see. Mighty Messer says, Sharp is in the G League almost all year for Portland. Boyant ready to go against M top NBA level players. Well, the, the nice thing is, if Sharp is at the NBA level, he's going to be paired with a really good offensive guard in either Simons or um dame so he's not gonna have to do too much at the nba level in year one it's not like you know we're putting him on a, a team and saying okay go be the creator go be the guy 
he'll play off the ball and he'll, you know, he'll hit the gaps, he'll cut, he'll slash, he'll do that kind of stuff. And I think it's going to actually be an easier transition for him than most people are assuming. My guess is he will spend some time in the G League for sure. Most rookies do. Uh, and I, I think it'll be good for him. But I think we'll see some Shaden Sharp this year at the NBA level. I think more than some people are going to predict. Eduardo Marrara says Kevin Durant is going to Denver for Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray and picks. Well, that would be a definite strong grab by the Brooklyn Nets if they could get that done. Gremlin says supposedly the Spurs were offered a Kongwu, but only if they removed unprotected status from the 2025 and 2027 Atlanta picks. Interesting. I mean, if I was Atlanta, I would rather just have a Kongwu than those picks unprotected. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think that a Kongwu is a really nice player and, and if the Spurs turn that down, that's a little crazy to me. Oh, Bercy says, also, I know we've talked about KD to raps for Trent Jr., OG Ananobi, and picks. Do you see a rotation of Van Vliet, Siakam, KD, Scotty, Precious being best team or rotation in the East? It's hard to say they're not, right? You've got so much length there with Siakam, Precious, Achua, KD, and Scotty. And then Fred Van Vliet, yes, he's undersized, but he's one of the better defensive guards in the league. He really works his tail off on that end of the floor. I think that's a big reason why Raptors fans love him so much. Uh, and ultimately, you know, if they if they're able to get that done, uh, a trade for Kevin Durant, you'd have to consider them at least right in that conversation for being the best team, especially if they still have Delano Banton coming off the bench. Um, they, they'd be legit. Uh, this trade would be very similar to what we saw with uh, Kawhi Leonard going to Toronto. So we'll see if masai has got another big move in his pocket for uh, this situation. Caleb says, think the Pacers could be doing anything. I think they're going to be patient. Uh, I don't know if there's any real reason for Indiana to push for anybody right now. Eduardo says, what moves did you see? Spurs doing this free agency. With San Antonio, it's kind of tough to predict anything specific with them simply because they're in a tank job right now. They want to sell. They want to lose, it seems like. Uh, which I don't necessarily think is the best route, but if they get one Banyama, obviously I'll be wrong um, because that would be well worth it. But, you know, I, I ultimately think they don't really make any big moves unless they somehow find a way to luck into Aiden in like some type of three team sign and trade business with Brooklyn. Jason Lewis says, good morning, Sheldon passing by for another uneventful Rockets news day. Yeah, Jason, we're glad to have you in here. We'll keep our eyes on the Rockets. Nothing, nothing really yet from them, obviously, but you know, it makes sense. My Holy King says every team that Drummond goes to fails. I, that's true, but let's not forget he was playing with the Pistons, the Lakers, the 76ers, and the Nets. That's who he's played with. How Over the last decade, those are probably four of the most dysfunctional teams. <laughs> like, honestly, uh, I don't know if it's a Drummond thing as much as it is an organizational thing. You know, does Drummond make them a championship contender there in Chicago? No. But throughout an 82 game regular season, does he help them? Yeah, no question. Yeah, the I, I think Drummond, you know, was playing for Stan Van Gundy in Detroit. That's that's not going to get the job done. He was playing for, you know, the Frank Vogel Lakers, and they've just been nothing but a nightmare the last you know 20 months. And then, <laughs> like what the 76ers and the Ben Simmons drama, and then the Nets with the Ben Simmons drama. I mean, I, I don't think it's a Drummond thing. I you know I, I get what you're saying, but ultimately i i don't i don't know post balloons remember that time cuban want, wanted deandre jordan so bad he camped outside of his house man has the league changed yes it is night and day different from from that time dallas really lucked out of that long contract uh that was it, it was crazy <laughs> oh toronto raptors making a signing <clears throat> Otto Porter Jr. signs with the Toronto Raptors on a two-year deal with a player option. So Toronto adds another lengthy wing to their team who can shoot the three ball. That's a, a valuable get for them. Uh, even if there's no KD trade, that fits their bench really well. They need to find another guy to add to their rotation that could actually play meaningful minutes, and they got one in Otto Porter Jr. Definitely huge. Edward, welcome to the stream, says, thoughts on Fox and Malik Monk back together. Sasha Vizenkov will come after he finishes Euro League. Murray Monk, Sasha, Harrison Barnes all shoot high clubs from three. Those uh that that combination of players is pretty solid. I, I think Monk's a nice budget get. Now, does he change the course of Sacramento Kings history? No, probably not. Uh, but I think he's a nice player off the bench for them. I do. And I, I think with where they're at, if Vizenkov can actually give them. 
meaningful minutes off the bench behind Harrison Barnes or Chemezi Metu, uh, I think that there's some some serious value there for them. So Brian says, what do you think about Colin Sexton to the Mavericks now that Brunson is on the Knicks? I do not want Sexton. Uh, I think that Sexton is going to be an overpay. Um, I like Sexton. I think Sexton's a good player, but I don't think he's going to be uh, – uh, I don't think he's going to be the the player that pushes Dallas over the top. Aaron says, yo, utility, do you actually think Lakers get Kyrie? I think realistically they should be considering themselves in the driver's seat because when I talk about dysfunction, Kyrie's right at the center of all of that. Kyrie's one of the most dysfunctional players in the, le- in the league in terms of reliability. Now, is he an elite talent? Yes. Is he absolutely spectacular sometimes? Yes. Would the Lakers get better by dr- by trading for him? Yes but not any other teams really in a position where they're wanting to sign up for an expiring Kyrie Irving. That just sounds like a headache to most teams. The Lakers, it sounds like, Oh, this is our chance to get better. You know, that's, that's kind of the situation. David Crawford says dark horse team and Katie sweepstakes Katie to the Toronto Raptors thoughts. We've talked about that a little bit, David. I think that's um, somewhat plausible. If you can offer Trent jr. And OG and to Brooklyn and, and a collection of draft picks, that's a pretty good starting offer. Uh, It really is. Eduardo, I, I would prefer that over DeAndre Ayton, no question. Eduardo Marara says, will Spurs be Sacramento Kings with Texas accent, uh, or will they become good anytime soon? I, I don't think they'll be as bad as the Kings have been long-term. You know, the Kings have been really bad for a long time. Uh, I don't think the, the Spurs will be that bad, but, you know, it's possible. You never really know. Reverse and spin says, get some GM utility sports hype in this chat. You heard him. Let's get some GM utility sports hype. We got 300 people watching. We're not even at 100 likes yet. Let's go ahead. Let's try and get up to 115 likes. That means I need 20 of you to hit the like button right now. My Holy King says, Mr. Pooh, I bet uh, will be a decent time. I'll be, be a decent team after all of this is over. Uh, thanks for caring. That's funny uh, from my Holy King. Aaron says 76ers favorite in the East right now. I'm not sure if they're the favorite, but they're they're in contention for sure. Joe Mabe says Jokic made Pacers bigs look bad. Seems soft. Goga and two young Jackson in that game minus injured Turner. I think Turner would have looked better versus Jokic. Uh, his soft shots and layups. I, I think Turner would have, you know, just played better than those two guys. I, I think Isaiah Jackson is going to be a, a really mainstay big in this league, though, for a long time. Uh, I kind of likened him to JaVale McGee when he came in. Now, he's not going to have the boneheaded moments like McGee did, uh, but he's a very similar player in terms of length and and athleticism. Uh, People don't really realize how athletic JaVale McGee is and was. JaVale McGee used to be one of the most athletic players in the league. So uh, I think that, you know, Isaiah Jackson is going to be a really good get. Mr. Rudy Poo says 76ers will only go for former Rockets. Ben McLemore plus Austin Rivers. I like it. I, I like it a lot. Nick Duffett says, where do you think uh, the Celtics are going? Gallinari and Thomas Bryant make a big trade. I don't think there's a big trade there. Uh, If they're going to make a trade with Brooklyn, I think Brooklyn would really want Jalen Brown, and I don't think that Brad Stevens is going to do that. So Gallinari, Thomas Bryant. Those two are pretty good gets uh, for Dallas or for Boston. I, I don't know if I'd want Gallo, though, just because he's a real negative defensively. Memphis says any Orlando Magic fans in chat in chat will Bobo will be back up for Bamba and Wendell Carter Jr. Uh, if there's Magic fans in here, let's get some Magic hype. I don't think Bobo will probably play that much, if at all. Atlanta and Ellis obviously excited there, saying my Hawks got their backup point guard. Yes, they did. It was a pretty good signing for them. Aaron Holiday, he's young and okay, which is a solid thing to get. Kevin McCormick says, what do you think Miami's offseason is going to look like? It's going to all depend on, on KD. If they can get Kevin Durant, it's a win. Otherwise, if not, uh, you know, it's kind of just a quiet offseason for Miami. So, uh, and that's okay. You know, they were just in the conference finals, almost made it to the NBA finals. So, if KD goes out west, it maybe doesn't even impact Miami that negatively not getting him. So, Lil Tree says, what do you see, Ben? What do you see Ben getting moved to if Brooklyn wants Bam? Oh, who do you see Ben getting moved to if Brooklyn wants Bam? So for Ben Simmons, I think, you know, like, could Sacramento be interested? Uh, Or could a team like the New York Knicks be interested? Maybe. Uh, I wouldn't rule any of those things out. But it's really tough to put a Ben Simmons trade together, which is why, you know, some people are so skeptical about Brooklyn getting Bam because it seems unlikely that Ben Simmons gets traded again. 
King Kane says, did New York sign Cam Reddish yet? Would be a good pickup for the Sixers. Cam Reddish is under contract still. Uh, he is still with the uh, the New York Knicks, so don't don't worry about that. Going down here to Kai Gonzalez says, Halliburton, Matherin, and picks for Kevin Durant. Uh, and then what, the Pacers win like 45 games and, and get bounced in the first round? Uh, the, the Pacers are not in a position that they can trade away their young guys like that. Uh, you can't you can't trade Halliburton and Matherin and picks for Kevin Durant. And that would be a nightmare for Indiana. Uh, my Holy King says he had AD LeBron. Uh, talking about if you're talking about Russ, I mean, yeah, that's that's the issue is he had those two players who do not fit around him at all. If you're going to win with Russ, you need to put shooting and defense around him. And they gave him a big man who shoots 30 percent from three that everyone falsely labels a really good stretch big. Uh, and then they gave him LeBron, who doesn't play defense anymore. So, oh, Otto Porter Jr.'s wife is from Toronto. That makes it even better. Really nice pickup for Toronto. I think it's really, really solid. Eddie says the Clippers need a solid power forward slash stretch center. Uh, sort of. They could use a backup big for sure, but it's a thin. It's thin pickings right now. Mr. Rudy says Golden State Warriors falling apart. Jordan Poole and Looney contracts are killing them. I, I don't know. I think I think it's not that big of a deal. Uh, losing GP2 is tough, but losing Otto, they'll, they'll be fine. They're the Warriors. They they will be able to find and replace those players. King Kane says, Sixers, where were you with Otto Porter? Sucks. Obviously, uh, a lot of people wanted Otto Porter Jr. He was a good fit into Golden State. He was. But I'm going to say right now, he looked better there than he is as a player. Um I think he has value in this league. I think it's a good get for Toronto. I think Toronto's a good fit for him for sure uh, because they kind of play a similar style of basketball that fits what he wants to do. The issue, though, is like, I don't know. I, I don't think that Otto Porter Jr. changing teams is the end-all, be-all for Golden State. Eddie says, Brunson way overpaid, shaking my head. Only average eight, 16 points. That was in playoffs only. Well, the thing about Brunson is – He's going to average more points in New York because he's not going to be playing off the, off the ball as much. So, Scotto says, mad props to GP2 for balling out and getting that bag. I'm so happy for him. You know, he's had a long journey. I don't think people realize how old he is. He's already almost 30. He's he's nearing 30 years old. Uh, I believe he's 29 right now. Uh, let me let me double check that just to be sure because I don't want to be spreading misinformation. But um, it, it's definitely one of those things that. He's been grinding for a while. Yeah, he's 29. He'll turn 30 in December. So, uh, you know, he's not as young as everyone thinks he is because he's, you know, relatively newer to a lot of people's, you know, mind. I remember watching him play in the G League four, five, six years ago. So uh, I'm really happy for him. He's really worked on his craft and has gotten to a point where he's he's getting the bag now. So huge credit to him. A little, uh, Eddie says GP2 doesn't help Dame Lillard out at all. Uh, well, if you watch Portland, you would know that that team couldn't guard anybody. So the fact that they added Jeremy Grant and Gary Payton the second and Josh Hart all within the last six months, that's good positives for them defensively. It really is. My Holy King says, do you remember how bad Ricky Rubio was? He couldn't shoot a gun. Look at him now. <laughs> couldn't shoot a gun. That's a, a funny saying there. King Kane says, Ben is part of Nets' future. They like Ben. I'm sure they do. What are they going to say that they don't like him? I mean, you know. Atlanta analyst says, hit that like button. Eddie says, Sixers, nobody wants to play with Harden. Maxi needs to leave. I, I think people like playing with Harden. I, I think that's really uh, overspoken and, and over-talked about, honestly. Call in box breaks with the GM Utility Sports in the chat. That's awesome uh, to see. Evan Jackson says, thoughts on Brogdon value after Knicks and Wizards added guards already? Uh, it's definitely not as high as people were thinking. Uh, you know, I saw at some point people were saying that they could get like a top 10 pick for him or something. I was like, no, that's that's not a thing. Uh, if you're going to trade him, you're going to get a, a first that's going to be, you know, protected. And it's going to be probably a pick that ends up being like pick 23 in the draft or something. Nick says, do you think Celtics make a big move? Do they use their trade exception or do they just go after Gallinari? My guess is with the tax, they're not going to use the uh, trade exception. I don't think they want to dip into the tax right now. It's going to depend on, on where they're at throughout the season and keep their flexibility open, and they still could use that trade exception later. Steven says, where do you think Gallo is going to land? I think Boston's a, a legit spot. I think Dallas wouldn't be out of the question. And one place a little under-talked about, I think a return to the Los Angeles Clippers would be pretty solid as well. David Crawford says the better comparison for what the Spurs will be for the next few years is OKC. 
but with a shorter time frame for a rebuild, which makes sense because Sam Presti used to be in the Spurs organization. Thoughts? I mean, I, I don't think any of the Sam Presti stuff is coming because he was from the Spurs organization. I think, I, I think right now the Spurs looked at themselves and I don't think they're trying to emulate Sam Presti. I think they're trying to make the best moves for themselves. And if they felt like they could potentially lose DeJounte Murray for nothing or for less than what they got, then they made the move now. And they're going to try and, you know, develop some of those young guys. Rever uh, reverse and spin, obviously hyped about Otto Porter Jr. Sign signing with the Raptors. Definitely a really good signing for them. Uh, I'm really happy for that franchise and that organization. Welcome everyone to the stream. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe in the description right now. Go follow me on my personal Instagram. I will be shouting out everyone who does. It's the second link in the bio. And then also the first link is our Twitter. Go follow us on there and I will uh, shout you out as well. Okay, yep. Once the San Antonio Spurs finalize the expected release on forward Danilo Gallinari, his preference is to join the Boston Celtics upon clearing waivers. So it sounds like uh, Boston will be the front runner for Danilo. Banjito says, has, have the Hornets done anything yet? No, they've been quiet. Uh, Aiken says, you can't trade Ben. His value is way too low right now. It is. Yeah, I agree. But if, if they really want Bam, that's what they would have to do. Uh, Killing Quando says Timberwolves about to get nasty watch. I hope so. It'd be fun watching a good Timberwolves team. Uh, they've gotten better in recent years, so we'll see if they can take that step forward. Post Baloney says I would give Brogdon and Heald for Ben Simmons. We need a four. I, I mean, I'm sure the Pacers would love to have Simmons. They're gonna have to give up more though to get to get Ben. Samuel says, do the Lakers only have two spots open now? They've got um, more than two spots. They've got uh, a whole roster basically at the fill. They still have to sign four or five guys. Fred the Jig says, Magic having a low-key great offseason. We are set up for a great trade soon, and we have the most cap space to assist in a trade. They definitely have some options. Chris Estrada and Little Tree, thank you for following on Twitter. Huge shout-outs to both of you guys, Little Tree and Chris. Huge thank you to you, Chris, from San Antonio. That's awesome to see. Uh, big uh, Spurs fan, I'm sure, than Chris. Jamie says, can you see Nick's? now going to trade for a superstar? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think the Knicks are going to roll with what they've got. Jamie says, or uh, CL Oracle says, if my son screw this up and not get KD, we've been losing out on other signings. Uh, they have been, but it's okay. They're still in a good spot. They've still got the core there together that a lot of people thought could make the finals. So uh, I wouldn't worry. Edward says, who do you think will be the team that surprises everyone next season? Um, I think one of those teams, I, I think Memphis is going to be surprising in a way that they're not as good as everyone thought. Uh, and I think the Clippers are going to be a team that probably could win the finals. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to say they for sure will. There's always injuries and questions. But if L.A. is healthy and Kawhi coming off of a year of rest, he, they're going to be legit. Uh, the Clippers are going to be really tough to beat. Mighty Messer says Looney is easily replaceable. Wiseman being healthy and, and any other big body can upgrade that spot for Golden State. Uh, I think, you know, Wiseman's got better physical tools. I don't know if he's an actual upgrade yet at this point, though, over Looney, just because of how their system works. Colin says Otto can shoot the three at a nice clip. Yes, he can. That's valuable right there. That's part of why he was able to get another contract uh, and a pretty good one. Uh, Zhao says, what about Jalen Smith? Uh, shout out to Connor as well for following on the Instagram. Huge shout out to you, Connor. Uh, that's also, that's a little treat. So huge thank you uh, to you. Love to see that make sure you guys go follow on the Instagram. Uh, for Zhao, what about Jalen Smith? Is he under contract? He's not under contract. He's a free agent. I think the Pacers would do well keeping him. Eddie says GB2 only defense can't create his own offense. Well, yeah, you don't need him to when you have Anthony Simons and Dame Lillard. That's that's kind of the point of having those top players is you have other players around them who do other stuff. GP2 can shoot really well from the corner, can work as a short roll guy if you want him to and defends like crazy. GP2 is a valuable add to that team, for sure. <laughs> Scott says Simmons is going to have to double up his therapy sessions with all that's going on in Brooklyn. He's going to have to. Uh, he, he needs to, for sure. So that's a, that's a funny comment. Fred the Jig says Jalen Smith's being slept on. I think so, a little bit. Brian says, what's next for the Mavs? What do you think about the McGee signing? McGee was a good signing uh, for them. I think that there's not a lot of other options out there. I don't really know if there's anything else in line for Dallas. I think they're going to actually probably be a little quiet. Uh, and I think maybe they look at themselves and if there's a trade out there, you know, I think, I think they're the sleeper team for Kevin Durant uh, as well. You know, we talked about the Raptors and, 
And I think the Pelicans could have a shot at it. I think Dallas, uh, if Dallas can orchestrate a three or four team trade that, that helps them acquire enough assets to make this work. I think they could be a, a pretty solid team to watch for. Killing Quando says, do you think Wolves could get in a three team trade with Suns and Nets? D'Lo and a lot of players and picks to Brooklyn, Aiton to Minnesota and Katie to the Suns. I don't know if Minnesota is as willing to do that now simply because they drafted Walker Kessler on draft night. So I don't know if they're going to go and target a big uh, as much as everyone thinks they're going to. King Kane says Ben Simmons wanted his own team and looks like he may get it. See if he shines. He won't shine. Um, you know, people are like, oh, well, if you space the floor, he doesn't, he's not a great ball handler. Uh, he's a solid one. He's not like someone who's going to like a lot of his dribble drive success comes off of a fake handoff. Uh, he's not going to be someone who breaks down a defender with a live dribble and blows by him and finishes through contact. And then the thing is, even if he does get contact, he's going to miss half the free throws he takes. So uh, I don't think that's going to be any success. Bentley says, I'm back. Welcome back, Bentley. Glad to have you in here. Fax says, at what age did you start hating the Lakers? I don't hate the Lakers. Uh, I don't have anything really against the Lakers. Uh, in fact, before when they first signed Rajon Rondo and Beasley and Lance Stevenson and they had Lonzo still and Ingram, I was really excited about that team. I thought they were uh, a fun fun young team with you had LeBron in there and some, some weird but exciting veterans. I was excited for it. Uh, I don't really have anything against the Lakers, so I'm not sure. Not sure why you're uh, upset about it, but honestly, the Lakers have just been really bad the last year and a half. So uh, there's not really much to, to say about that other than they haven't been what people think they can be. Brian says, Bruce Brown is a nice pickup for the Nuggets. He definitely is. Go follow us on Twitter. My thoughts on that signing are on the Twitter area. Larry the Bird says, break news. Mitchell Robinson officially signs four years, 60 million with the Knicks. Definitely a solid signing for them. I think it's going to be a nice move overall for New York. Little Tree says Josh Giddy MVP season. It'd be awesome to see Giddy uh, pop off this year. I think he's going to have uh, a few triple doubles this season at least. So he'll be uh, pretty good. Shao says, I'd like to see Grayson Allen in Detroit. I personally wouldn't. Um, if I'm a if I'm a fan of a team, I don't want Grayson Allen there. Uh, I, I don't I do not like Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen is a very dirty player. I don't care what anyone says. He has a very bad track record. Uh, and you know, the other day I rewatched him break you know, basically, or hurt Alex Caruso again. I rewatched that play, and it was very dirty. On uh, the next time they played each other, Vucevic laid out Grayson Allen, and it was well-deserved. I do not like Grayson Allen. I don't want to see him even in the NBA anymore, honestly. Um, I usually don't have anything against any players, but Grayson Allen I am not a fan of. Looking at this next comment here, Scotto says, why does Vegas have the Knicks as one of the favorites to land KD? Um... I'm not exactly sure why. I don't think that's going to happen. Kirk says Pelican signing of Zion. They gave a lot of money. That Now, there's support re, reportedly some protections in there against injury and stuff for how much they have to pay, which is a good thing. If not, it would have been really a nightmare. AJ Analysis says, what do you think about Katie to the Grizzlies? It's a sleeper. You know, Ke Kevin Durant to Memphis makes sense. The, the only thing is, if you have to give up Desmond Bain, I don't know if I love it as much. Uh, I think that's... Uh, that's a that's a big question there. Jabari Smith Jr. says predict Nets record next season. This is a uh, hilarious because obviously we don't know anything about the roster. I think they're going to be better than everyone thinks. I'm going to say 40 and 42. I, I think they're going to get enough decent players back that they win 40 games in the East next year. Uh, and not that they're going to be great, but they'll they'll make the play in tourney. I think. Dan says trade Tobias and Matisse for Thibel or, or uh, Matisse Thibel for Jimmy. Uh, I do not think the Heat would do that. Eric says, what type of free agents for the Spurs? And hit the likes. Make sure to hit the like button right now. We have 370 people watching. Let's go ahead and smash that like button. Let's get up to 200 likes on the stream right now. Let's go ahead and do it. For the Spurs, I, I think if they're going to sign anybody, they got to sign young players uh, and, and sign some players who could maybe turn into something down the road. Joe says Wizards are a sleeper team for Kevin Durant. I get what you're saying there, kind of the hometown team. We'll see if that does make some sense. He did take a, a meeting with them back in 2016 before signing with the Warriors. Jack Christopher said, unfortunately, the Pacers can only offer Jalen Smith about $5 because the Suns declined his team option, so it might be hard for Indy to keep him. It, it is, but they have they have early bird rights. Um, so even though there's they, they could offer him more than $5 million, and even $5 million might be enough to keep Jalen Smith. So. Um, it's not quite how it works. Looking at Chris Estrada here says, what point guard do you see the Spurs going on signing, assuming they don't want to start Trey Jones or Primo? 
that's where, you know, Colin Sexton would make some sense if they do want to stay somewhat competitive now. Sexton would help you with that. But I'm not sure if they actually go and do that. I think they might just start uh, one of Jones or Primo at point guard. Corner Corn, thanks for following on Twitter. Huge shout out to you for the follow on there. Make sure you guys go and hit the follow button right now. Definitely would appreciate it. Samuel McMahon says the Lakers have Russ, LeBron, AD, Non, THT, Reeves, Wenyan Gabriel, Johnson, Juan Toscano, Damian Jones, Troy Brown, Lonnie. That's 12. Well, right, but you're you're also kind of counting Wenyan Gabriel and Stanley Johnson and JTA, who are three players that I don't think play any really real role on a good team. Uh, you know, I know Stanley Johnson looked okay for the Lakers last year. He's one of their better players, actually. Um, that's the reason why they missed the playing tournament was Stanley Johnson was one of their better players. Uh, and does none play this year at all? Uh, do we even know? Do we know if THT is even on the roster to start the year because they could trade him? They still have more moves ahead of them. You know, I said five. Okay, they have three roster spots open, but they have about four questionables uh, at least. So we'll see. Eddie said, Eddie said, Lakers, if they get KD or Kyrie and join LeBron, who in the NBA has high chances of winning a game night in, night out, whether only two of them play and who sits out, LO can't prepare for the unknown. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the thing is getting KD or Kyrie, it's not like it makes them a championship contender. I just think that they might, might try it. So we'll, we'll see. I, I'm not really sure. Joe says, I'm tuned in. What's new? What news so far? Uh, not t- a ton of news. We've had, you know, the some of the signings we've already talked about. Gallinari seems like he's going to the Celtics. Otto Porter to the Raptors. So there's been there's been some action, but not a ton uh, out there. So that, that's my thought right now. Bentley says, where is Kyrie? He's still on the nets. We'll see if he gets traded. Alex says, I would swap Ben Simmons for Rudy. I don't think the Jazz would do that. Jeremiah says, what's up? Welcome to the stream, Jeremiah. Glad to have you in here. Mighty Master says, Dort was re-signed already. Yes, he was. My Holy King, a New York fan, says, let's go Mets, Nets, and Jets. Getting the Mets, Nets, and Jets hype in the chat. Damien says, Katie to, D- uh, to DC would be epic. He, Beal, and Porzingis nasty if they can stay healthy. Yeah, they would be pretty good, honestly. Nick Duffett says, what do the Jazz do? Been quiet on Gobert recently. There's no way the Jazz just run it back with the same group, right? No, I think there's I think there's some moves for them. I want them to trade Mike Conley, but that's kind of my thought. Uh, Lil Tree says, I know, but he isn't something to build around for uh, for time about Lou Dort. Yeah, he's not a build-around player, but he's a, he's a solid player to have. Uh, Roll number 27 with the donation. Thank you so much for the super chat. Says, what do the Raps have to offer for Kevin Durant realistically? Realistically, I think that for KD to land Kevin Durant, they're going to have to offer. They have to start with OG and Anobi and Gary Trent Jr. going out the door. Those are two legitimately good players. You offer both of those guys, and then you offer a vast collection of picks, and you hope that's enough. I, I think that anything more than that really starts to sacrifice some of your depth. I know that they made some solid signings. But you don't want to run everything out the door. I think Ananobi and Trent Jr. is already a lot to give up. You throw picks on top, and that's probably right up the uh, right up the alley there. Uh, Joe, in, in terms of breaking up comment replies, you know we're we're talking about some of the things that could happen. We're we're talking about some of the the actual news when I'm replying to comments. So um, we're kind of doing a little bit of both here, Joe. James says, "What do you think the Cavs' next move is?" Uh, well, they signed Rubio. Uh, so I think now it's all about Sexton. Does he go somewhere? Do they work out a sign and trade? Do they keep him around? We will see. Eddie says Mitchell needs to leave, and so does Conley and Clarkson. Obviously, Eddie's not a fan of the Jazz backcourt there, but I, I don't think all three of those guys would leave. <laughs> Eddie's got some interesting takes, that's for sure. AJ Analysis says, says, do you think the Wizards should have let go of Bradley Beal? He's making too much money. They'll trade him. Uh, this is, this works out well for Washington because he will not finish that contract with them in my eyes. Chris says Vooch, Patrick Williams, Kobe, Io, two first for Kevin Durant. Then they signed Danilo. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't. I do not think the Bulls are going to get Kevin Durant. Looking at some of the other comments here. Um, <laughs> Matsi says, Danilo expected to sign with the Celtics. I think it's a solid offensive get for them. I don't know if I like it as much as other people are going to, though. Part of why Boston was so great is at pretty much all times, they had a really good defensive 
unit on the floor and, and really no one to pick on. Like, think about the unit here of Marcus Smart, Grant Williams, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Robert Williams, Al Horford, Derek White. There's not really a bad defender in that top seven, you know, and I think the fact that you had such a good collective unit, if they could add another defensive player into that uh, and really maximize their team defense, I think that would be the best way for them to get back to the finals uh, because against Brook or against not Brooklyn, excuse me, against Milwaukee and Miami, you need to be able to shut them down in the half court. We were, we saw them do that for the most part uh, in this past playoffs and Danilo Gallinari in the floor is going to give someone, give other teams a target to pick on. So I don't know if I like Danilo as much to Boston as others are going to. Offensively, he definitely helps them, don't get me wrong. But I don't know if I like it as much for what their overall team is built on. Jake says he's going to Phoenix in a trade involving Portland. Nurk goes to Phoenix. That's why he hasn't signed yet. Portland receives Aiton and adds in Hart. And a future first to Brooklyn. That's an interesting thought there, Jake. Uh, I'm not sure if that plays out, but it's a good theory. Dan says, can 76ers still trade right now? They could. They could have some trades up their sleeves. AJ says, do you think Kyrie to the Lakers would happen? I think it won't because of Russ. I think it could because of Russ, uh, actually. Sixers are a sleeper team for Kevin Durant. If not him, Kyrie is possible. I don't think the uh, the Sixers should try and get Kyrie Irving. I think that will just upset everything there. Jabari Smith says, do you have the Rockets as offseason winners if Katie does leave the Nets and potentially Kyrie as well? Yeah, for sure. The, the Rockets are in such a great spot. We've got 400 awesome people in here. Make sure to leave a like and also subscribe to the channel for more NBA content. We're going to stay live here for over another hour yet at this point. I'm super excited and super stoked for NBA free agency. Uh, it's been an awesome day too so far. Hopefully you guys are enjoying. Bentley says, can I join live later? Uh, actually, the uh, software I'm using does not allow other people to join the live. Unfortunately, uh, Raul, I did get to your super chat. So I, I do appreciate I know I, I was uh, a little late getting to it. Uh, but hopefully you uh, did enjoy my answer there for that. Thank you again. Really do appreciate all the super chats. I'm Cobra says, has Zach Levine re-signed with the Bulls? Not yet, but I think he's going to. AJ Analysis says, if I were the Nats, I want the most value from the other team. I would aim for Maxi. I, oh, I get, I get that. I would too. The thing is, if I'm the 76ers, though, I don't know if I want to give up my young dynamic guard for in a deal that, you know, for a player who just got done bashing James Harden four months ago. I don't know if that really makes the most sense. Jake O'Shea says, if Lakers running back without signing Kyrie, do you think they make a play out make the playoffs this season? If they stay healthy, they could slip into the playoffs. They could. They could be anywhere from a 10 to a to an 8 seed. On uh, If they play well in the play, and they could get in. That's kind of my thought. Auto boarded to the Raptors on a two-year deal. Really like that signing for them. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Toronto has become really adept at finding wings that fit not only their system, but fit the modern NBA. Guys who can shoot the three ball, handle it a bit, play solid defensively. Uh, and Toronto's got a really intriguing team defensive concept and scheme. You know, with all the length, uh, they basically use Scotty Barnes as a free safety, which is exciting and fun and, and awesome. And that's why I love Scotty Barnes to Toronto so much when they drafted him, because I know Nick Nurse is probably the best coach in the NBA uh, in terms of X's and O's scheme, understanding, you know, he's a genius. And like, honestly, he's like the doctor of, of basketball in my eyes. Uh, and I think that getting Otto helps them a little bit in terms of their depth. And that's really one of the few issues they have. They need to get more depth pieces and they got one here in Otto Porter. Molly says, uh, or Kevin McCormick, McCormick says, what's Miami's moves going to look like? It all depends on Kevin Durant. They're not going to make a move until Kevin Durant is all situated. Eddie says, Conley has to accept bench roll like backup or six man probably would be best. Matsi says, do you think Levine hasn't signed yet because Bulls have a trade in the works maybe for Collins? I'm not sure if there's anything to do with that. I think part of it is Zach Levine's probably listening to his agent. His agent's probably making some calls uh, to other teams. I think, you know, I talked about this last offseason, that there's a possibility Levine could leave Chicago. Now, I don't think he will at this point, but he's, it's not like he's, he's, a, he's a free agent. He is going to listen to some other offers, and he's going to, you know, really think about what he could possibly be worth to other teams and, and in other situations. Uh, G-A-P-E-E -E says Mavs trade for Irving. I hope not. As a Mavs fan myself, I really hope that we do not trade for Kyrie Irving. Uh, that is just too much drama. 
And I, I, yes, the talents there, yes, it would make the Mavs contenders, but I don't know. I don't, I don't think I want to do that. Jeremiah says Warriors need to do something. They'll, they'll find somebody. Don't worry. They've got the tax pyramid level to them. They could go out and, you know, pay $6 million for, for a guy. If they want to add somebody, they're, they're still in a good spot. People are going to be worried about the Warriors because it looks like they're losing their guys. You know, this happened back when they were winning championships the first time. You're bound to lose players when you pay as much as they do and are as successful as they are. You're going to lose players. Uh, and as long as they make some other budget moves, the nice thing is this time around, they've got a whole bunch of young players ready to take bigger roles. Moses Moody probably can play more next season. Jonathan Kaminga probably can take some of those Otto Porter Jr. minutes. If they make one signing here, I, I'm not worried about them at all. Reverse and spin says Raptors should keep Gary Trent Jr. Well, I, I think they should, unless they're getting Kevin Durant, then then you then you have to find a way to get him. So King Kane says, Are you surprised that Toronto's not offering packets for KD? They did it with Kawhi and won a chip. KD better than Kawhi. I don't know if Kevin Durant's better than Kawhi Leonard. Um I know some people are gonna think that's ridiculous to say, but when they're both healthy, Kawhi Leonard is that dude. Uh, I'm I'm gonna say that Kawhi Leonard is one of the most underrated athletes in terms of his actual athletic profile, how high he jumps, how strong he is, his physicality. Kawhi Leonard is a monster. Uh, and there's a real argument to be made that he could be the best player in the NBA on any given day. Uh, he is that dude. He's one of the few players that you look at the league, look, look at the league right now and, and tell me a player who can match up with Luka Doncic and then guard Giannis Antetokounmpo the next night. There's not a lot of guys that are capable of doing that. And then now you add, not only can they can he guard those two types of players and be successful at it, but you also add the fact that he's an elite superstar offensive player. Uh, again, it's just really rare. Kevin Durant does not guard like Kawhi Leonard can defend. Uh, Kawhi Leonard's one of the most fluid defensive players of all time. He is one of the smartest defensive players of all time. He's a phenomenal defensive playmaker. You know, Kawhi Leonard right, is right there in the conversation with KD. I think both of them are, are great individual players. Uh, Kawhi does more all around. Kevin Durant scores the ball better. So it depends on what you're looking for. But if you're asking, if you're asking me, I think Kawhi's right there with Kevin Durant in terms of talent. I think that I am surprised if the Raptors aren't making an offer. I think the Raptors should go all in on KD. If they can get a deal done and keep Siakam, uh, or even if they have to move Siakam, you know, everyone talks about, oh, well, if they give up Ananobi and Trent, heck, if they give up Siakam in one of those two, they could still win. If they give up Siakam and, and Trent, uh, Trent, you keep OG, give him a little bit of a bigger role, uh, and you've got Van Vliet still. That's not bad either. They could still win that way. So I, I would like that a lot for them. Mindset player says, do you think DeAndre Ayton will get traded to the Raptors? No, I don't think so. Not to Toronto with them drafting Christian Coloco. That really helps their backup big spot, by the way. RJ says, if you're the Pels, do you do a Brandon Ingram plus young player plus picks for KD or keep building what we got? Uh, if, if I'm the Pelicans, I'm not trading Ingram to get Kevin Durant. Uh, I think... This is the, you know, yes, Kevin Durant is way better than Brandon Ingram. But what do you, then at that point, you've got an older CJ McCollum. You have a 34 year old Kevin Durant set to play with Zion Williamson, who's 21 years old. What do you do five years from now when Katie's 39? Like, if you give up all those draft picks you've accumulated from the Drew Holiday trade and some of your other moves, why do you want to, you know, kind of sacrifice some of that youth? If you're going to make a trade for Kevin Durant, I think the, you have two untouchables. You do not trade Brandon Ingram. You do not trade Zion Williamson. And as we were talking about it here, NBA All-Star Zach Levine has agreed to a five-year, $215 million maximum contract to return to the Chicago Bulls with a player option in year five. So Levine gets pretty much the entire the entire max. Levine re-signs with Chicago. Five years, $215 million, huge hype move for Chicago. They kept their guy. Levine stays in town. Look at that Jimmy Butler trade. And the Wolves got so fleeced on that. Absolutely incredible. So Chicago keeps Zach Levine. They're able to hold on to their franchise player, their young guy who – has really improved a ton. He's not super young anymore, but he's he's still you know younger than DeRozan. He's still their build around player, uh, and I think it was huge for them to to hold on to him. I'm really interested in what you guys think about that move. I'm going to go ahead and end my poll here on the Kevin Durant signing, and we're going to put up another poll right now for you guys as well. So let's talk about the 
Levine signing. So I want to create a poll here about Zach Levine. Zach Levine signs a five-year, $215 million deal with the Chicago Bulls. Rate the signing. I want you guys to rate the signing here. And I'm going to go on a scale of 8 to 10. Actually, let's go 9 to 10. Let's go 6 to 8. 3 to 5. And 1 to 2. I want to know what your guys' thoughts are on this signing here. So there we go. Poll is out now. Go ahead and vote on that. I'm interested to see what you guys all say. But yes, Zach Levine signs a five-year, $215 million max contract with the Chicago Bulls, linking him to Chicago for quite some time. And it also has a player option for that fifth year. So basically here, Levine gets the best of what he could have gotten there with that team, which I'm I'm very excited about uh, for that organization. When you look at their current uh, you know, status and situation, I think it's really good. Also, for the uh, Kevin Durant uh, poll here, I'm, I want to talk about that real quick as well. Uh, you guys seemingly like him most to Phoenix, which is interesting. For Zach Levine, I think that's a, a good signing. Most people are agreeing with that. You know, The thing is, does it mean you're going to ever win a championship? Maybe not. But not every move is about necessarily always winning a championship. Bangito says, B.I. Hayes, Dyson plus picks for Kevin Durant. I don't know if that puts you over the top. I don't know if KD, McCollum, and Zion is enough to win a championship. So uh, I'm not sure. Z says they'll also make Kyrie coach so that he will stay and also Kevin Durant. That's the uh, the issue. Dontavia says, did I miss, miss anything so far? Well, we just had Zach Levine sign with the Chicago Bulls. That was huge. Uh, we also had Bruce Brown sign with the Denver Nuggets. The uh, there's been some other moves as well. When I look back at some of them, uh, we've seen the uh, plans for Gallinari to sign with the Celtics. Raptor signed Otto Porter Jr. and the Hawks signed Aaron Holiday. So some pretty solid signings. Gamer says Katie to Chicago might happen. Stop it says Katie will not fit well on the Suns. I think he will. Uh, Joe does not like the polls. I'm not sure exactly why uh, the polls are such a, a negative. I think the polls are pretty helpful, honestly. Yeah, Alan Analyst says he's trying to get our opinion, keep us involved. There's a reason for what he's doing. Yes, that's exactly the point. I'm trying to let you guys share with me what I'm sharing with you. And it seems like most of you, 86% of you think it's at least a six to eight or above. 50% said six to eight. 36% of you so far have said nine to 10. So pretty good signing overall. Uh, Herbert says, can Boston Celtics get James Harden? Why or not? Why not? No, they're not going to have any interest in James. Uh, they're not going to make a, a deal for Harden. Cruz Cole says, poor Levine, a great player who has mostly wasted his career on poor teams unless they figure out how to win in the playoffs. He'll be on, he'll be lucky to make it out of the first round of his entire career. That's okay. He just got the bag. I don't think he's going to mind 10 years from now when he's sitting on a beach, you know, sipping a, a margarita saying, wow, I made in my career, he'll probably have made close to half a billion dollars in his career playing basketball. That is insane. Um, Matsi gives it a 12. King Kane says a seven. Eddie says PG three, PG 13 is an all-star, not a superstar. Levine won't win in Chicago. It sucks for him and DeMar. They won't have an athletic roster. I mean, they got a decent team. W little tree says W happy for shy town. I am too. You know, that's, that's worked out really well uh, for them, honestly. So, you know, I feel really good with the poll. The other one had 641 votes. 35% of you said other 35% of you also said Phoenix Suns. So Miami heat came in second Brooklyn. Nets 7% voted for Brooklyn. So roughly about, 40 votes or so, 45 votes there, if I'm if my math's solid off the top of my head. Bucks and Six says, personally, I like the polls. I figured you guys would. That's why I wanted to do them today. So hopefully hopefully most of you are enjoying them. Mr. Rudy says, Wendy said, watch out for Utah Jazz complete teardown. We'll see. We'll keep our eyes on that. I have not heard that myself quite yet, but I'm what we're you know kind of aware of everything that could potentially go down. We are. King Kane says those two want the ball in their hands. They need to split up because they won't, they both want the same thing. Trade one of them for Kevin Durant. Uh, I'm not sure exactly who they're talking about here, but we shall see what actually plays out. Thundercat says, would anyone want Kate? Why would anyone want Katie? I get it, he's good, but with what you have to give up, he's not worth it. That's kind of what I find myself in. Now, 
Now, when I'm being realistic and mocking trades, I, I am mocking what I think will happen, which is, you know, really big assets and, and collection of picks and, and good young players, because ultimately some team will do it. But if I was running a team right now, looking at how this whole Brooklyn thing played out, do I want to sign up for Kevin Durant? It seems like a lot of drama. It seems like there's a lot of work. And by the way, he's going to be 34 years old. Do I want to trade picks seven years from now for someone who's 34? People think that the Atlanta Hawks did bad trading three picks, and one of them's very heavily protected, top 16 protected, for DeJounte Murray, who is 25 and was an all-star. Kevin Durant, yes, Kevin Durant's a way better player than DeJounte is right now. But in three years, what will Kevin Durant be? A really good role player? Like, Kevin Durant three years from now, yes, he'll still be good because he's Kevin Durant, but he's not going to be someone who's scoring 30 points a game in 2027. I don't, I don't see that at all. So giving, giving up that many players and, and good young picks, it is just kind of a questionable thing to me. Steven says anything on John wall, nothing yet. It's it, to me, just, I would basically assume it's a done deal that he's a clipper. Uh, that's what I would say. Great. That says, man, money buys happiness, not a championship ring on my finger. It does. It does buy happiness you know that that's the one thing Levine is going to be chilling in the Bahamas and and enjoying his life Aaron Holiday is such an underrated signing for Atlanta my sons never gave him a fair shot I think he's a, a good pickup for Atlanta for sure you know gives them a a bench guard that can come off the bench and and do his thing when they need him to Mighty Messer says making money guarantees nothing Delonte West is out panhandling on the streets nowadays Antoine Walker blew everything too yeah but Zach Levine's not going to do that like you're, you're, you know, you, you name two players throughout the course of NBA history who've blown their money. Um, and yes, yeah, some players make really terrible decision. It, it is hard to blow through $250 million. I, I will, I will guess that it is difficult to blow that much money. Uh, and with some of the agents that some of these players have, uh, as long as something goes terribly wrong in their lives, it's life changing money. There's, there's no, in fact, it's generation changing money. It is for generations. Levine's life, family will be taken care of, which is good. I'm glad for him. Thundercat said KD only won when he came into an already made situation. This is the truth. There's nothing but facts in that comment. Uh, <laughs> ITK says G or good morning, pretty in pink. Uh, that's uh, very nice. Glad to uh, glad to uh, hear that I'm looking pretty dapper in my pink here. My shirt says rather be hooping because hooping is life. I love playing basketball so. Uh, would be fun to be playing. Atlanta Alice said the Nets said they don't want Aiton and Booker just got an extension, which makes him untradeable. I don't see Katie and Phoenix. Uh, I mean, you know, they, the Nets didn't publicly say they don't want Aiton. Joe wants my thoughts on the Magic's $20 million deal for Gary Harris. Uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily understand it unless they trade him, then it's fine. The contract, the price points about right and everything. I just, I don't know. I, I, that's one of those useless moves that doesn't move the needle for anybody right now. Eli says going for KD is a win now scenario. That's why I think it's still worth to go worth to go to get him. Yeah, but it's not a guarantee you win. Uh, like look at Brooklyn. They, they made the win now move for James Harden, which was way more obvious of a decision for them because you had Katie and Kyrie and you were able to add Harden off of that. Um, they had to trade young players. They probably wouldn't have been able to keep anyway because of the luxury tax. So it, it made sense for them to go make that move. Uh, and it still didn't work out. It still didn't. And now they're going to pay the, the, the L on that. They're, they're taking a huge L because of that. So I, I get why it's worth it. I'm just saying I wouldn't do it. Reagan says KD to Atlanta. That's one of the situations I like because they have all these players that they could send back. I actually like Kevin Durant to Atlanta quite a bit. Chino J says Rubio to the Cavs for the next three years. I like that a lot for Cleveland. They get another bench guard there. Regardless of what happens with Sexton, I think having Rubio on that roster is a really good get for them. I, I really do. Steven says if John Wall's a Clipper, why haven't the Clippers announced it? Because it's not finalized yet. They're, you know, and the thing is, none of these teams are going to announce signings uh, until the beginning of the league year, uh, because that would be technically against the rules. So, um, you know, teams aren't announcing anything right now because nothing is finalized. But the Clippers will sign John Wall. That's basically a done deal. 
Let's go to the next comment here. Stop it says yesterday I wanted Katie on the Raptors, but now that I think about it, I don't want to give up Barnes and Siakam. I don't think you'd have to give up Barnes and Siakam. I think you'd probably have to give up Siakam and Trent or OG Ananobi and Trent, which isn't as bad. Uh, you're not going to give up Scotty Barnes for, for Kevin Durant. Uh, I think that's a, that's a hard no from the Raptors. Uh, Seb wants to know, did the Raptors just get Otto Porter? Yes, they did. So they add some forward depth, which could be valuable for them. Did, not, did Gallinari sign with the Celtics yet? LAFK wants to know. No, not yet, because they have to wait for him to clear waivers. Technically, right now, a team could pick up his uh, his option, or they could like claim him and pay his contract. Now, nobody's going to do it, but you legally, by NBA CBA law, you have to wait for that to finalize. Everyone knows that he's not going to get picked up. He's not going to get claimed, but you do have to wait. Gremlin Machine Shop says the chances of Charlotte Pitt conveying to Spurs next season may as well be zero. Hornets would have to be seven seed or better, make playoffs, and a top 14 record in the league. No. And then that's exactly the point here. That's why that, that pick is – it conveys to two second rounders. So, really, for DeJounte, they got a pick swap, which they won't execute because the Hornets would – or the uh, the Hawks would likely be better than them, I would have to guess, because they have Trey Young and DeJounte Murray. Uh, and then they – so they got two firsts and basically two seconds for him, which is why I was as harsh as I was, because I feel like, you know, you could have gotten better returns for him. But the issue, I didn't know about the fact that he wasn't going to extend. That changes my thoughts on it. I give it like a C plus grade now instead of a D. So obviously it changes it quite a bit. That's a pretty substantial difference, but I still feel like they could have done better. Bray that says same thing with Beal. He got a bag. He's going to be financially stable for the rest of his life. He doesn't care about a ring. People forget he can still be traded eventually and have the same bag. Literally, that's that's the point. Beal, if he wants to at any point, can go to Washington and say, hey, look, I've been here for over a decade. I've been really loyal to you guys. I you know, I stuck it out in free agency. I could have tested the market. Instead, I, I re-upped with you guys. I want to help you, and I want you to help me. Trade me to a spot I can win. You're going to be able to get all these draft picks back and, and really reset your future because of me. This is the win-win for both sides. That's what ultimately is going to happen probably two years from now. Two years from now, you I'll be live streaming, and you guys will be in here uh, hanging out again. And I'll be talking about how Bradley Beal is going to get traded soon and how a bunch of teams would be really lucky to get him and how it's going to take a bunch of draft picks. And that's why Washington, it makes sense for them to keep him right now because they can always just trade him later if they if there's, you know, willingness from both sides to do it. Otherwise, they keep Beal and it's a nice feel-good story and he's like one of their the faces of their franchise for the rest of forever because everyone's going to remember Beal in Washington even if he never wins. 3K and W says with Spurs still having 39 million, they appear to be a prime facilitator. What do you think they do? My thoughts are signing trade for Aiden and Durant to Phoenix. That's where they can they can get involved, right? That's where a team like San Antonio is going to be vital if a team like the Mavericks get involved or a team like Miami who needs some help get with the cap, opening up some space. That that's exactly what I'm watching for is the Spurs to to get involved in a three team or four team deal uh, around Kevin Durant. Eddie says, is Juan Toscano a breakout player this year? No, he is not. Uh, he'll have his moments, but he's not a breakout player this year. AK, AKKD says, the KD hate is tiring. People just regurgitate the same five narratives since 2016. The the issue, okay, AKKD, I don't I really understand that because everyone in the, everyone here acknowledges he's a top five player in the world right now, okay? But, but the honest truth is that when he's been the guy on his own team, I don't even have to say, you know what I'm thinking. That's that's the point. Uh, you know, he got swept in the postseason this year. You know, everyone loves to to hate on James Harden. Kevin Durant shot sub 40% from the field this postseason. Below 40% from the field. Now, of course, there's only four games because that's how long it took the Celtics to sweep them. But you know, I you know, the 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 fact that he won rings in Golden State does not make him immune to criticism. Holy cow. Yusuf Nurkic got overpaid. Oh my goodness. Free agent center. Yusuf Nurkic has agreed to a four year, $70 million deal to stay with the Portland trailblazers. Oh my goodness. Holy cow. I'm tweeting real quick. Hold on. Wow, that is a massive overpay for Yusuf Nurkic.
Levine is huge for Chicago. I definitely agree with that. Sports 789 says, I'm starting to agree with you. KD is at the tail end of his career. Getting KD doesn't guarantee a chip unless he's going to Golden State. That's the thing, right? Trading, you you would think trading for a player means you're means you're in a position right now to win a championship, but it's not a guarantee. And you don't want to hurt your entire future to to do that. You don't want to mortgage everything to maybe, maybe, maybe win a championship. Like, especially if you're not a poverty franchise. Like, the Clippers getting Paul George and Kawhi was huge because it's changed their brand. Otherwise, like, a team, like, if you, if the Pelicans screw up here and trade for Kevin Durant and it doesn't go well, oh, my goodness. that, that It just destroys everything. It, it destroys everything. Yeah, like, think, think about the Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce trade. Now, KG, KD's better than them, uh, but... That's the that's the thing. Rich Paul does strike again. Oh my goodness. Mighty Messer says AKKD is probably Durant himself. He loves to sneak into the convos about himself. True. Honestly, probably true. Uh Alex says all that money for Nurk to play 20 games over the length of that contract. Bad move by Portland. Yeah, that's that's a definite overpay there. That is. I when I when I was talking about AKKD says he had one bad playoffs. Okay, but I'll, let's let's talk. If you want, you know, people love to talk about James Harden choking. What happened in the 2016 playoffs? What happened in the in the Western Conference Finals? They were up three one to Golden State. What happened? What happened? You said one bad playoffs. Let's talk about that series. What happened? Russell Westbrook outplayed Kevin Durant for the last three games of that series. By the way, uh, just letting you know, you know, Kevin Durant. No one. No, no, everyone in the media is afraid of saying anything negative about Kevin Durant because he pops back off on them on social media. And just because he's a player, everybody says, oh, he's right. Just because he just because he's a a player doesn't mean he knows everything about basketball. Doesn't mean that he's 100 percent correct all the time. There's a lot of players. Think think about Kendrick Perkins played in the league for 15 years and couldn't pronounce Moses Moody on draft night. Doesn't mean he's a genius. Doesn't mean he knows everything just because he played. Uh and, and I agree, Aaron. James Harden doesn't choke as bad as everyone says. Uh, you know, I, I think you know Harden's had some really bad performances, but for some reason we focus so much on on Harden's bad performances. But Kevin Durant chokes away the 20, 2016 Western Conference Finals completely by himself. Chokes it away, gets destroyed by the Boston Celtics this year. Destroyed. Not wasn't even a top two player on the floor. That entire series was not a top two player on the floor, and. Honestly, like, it's just ridiculous. It's And if you want to talk about bad games, remember the game that Patrick Beverly forced Durant into nine turnovers and he took a total of eight shots? Durant had a playoff game where he shot less times than he turned over the basketball. That's something I know James Harden's never done in the playoffs. So, and Sudsy says, dang, bird catching strays. Yeah, he is, because it just is ridiculous. Uh, JJ says, my least favorite signing so far, if any. I think it's the Nurkic one just now. Uh, I think the Nurkic one is really bad. Uh, Stuart Lord, Caden Herndon, and also Chindian, thank you so much for uh, the follows on Twitter. Really appreciate you guys. Um, it's a lot. It means a lot having you guys hit that follow button on Twitter. Harden went 0 of 17 from three. I mean, Harden's had his bad playoff games, yes, but it's it's not like he's, it's not like for entire series he's choked. Uh, you know, that's the, that's the thing, I think. James Harden's playoff period is playoff success is really underrated. I uh, for someone who averages 28 points a game in the postseason since getting traded from Oklahoma City, uh, that's you know I think underrated. And also, by the way, when the when the Thunder made it to the finals, I, I just want to point out that James Harden's the guy who got them there with a huge step back three over Kawhi Leonard. Uh, so 2012, the the Thunder wouldn't have made it without James Harden then either. So yeah, that's that's the thing. Uh, Unlimited Range wants to know the next trade uh, I see happening. The next trade I see happening, uh, I don't know. That, that's tough because supposedly the Wolves are in deep talks for Rudy Gobert. That is insane. If that's the case, holy cow, that would be insane. Steven says, do you think Clippers need another backup center for Zubats? Yeah, I think they need one. Um, but they might just be planning to play small ball behind him. So maybe it's not the end of the world. Aaron says KD Loki isn't the guy Harden's been to the Western Conference Finals five times, right? Let me look at um let me look at James Harden playoff stats just to uh guarantee that because I don't want to say something and, and have that not be right. Um I need to go ahead and look back at his playoff game logs a little bit. Um so so here's here's James Harden's playoff game logs 
uh, throughout his entire career. This is this includes his time in Oklahoma City. He has had 14 games where he scores zero to nine points, 45 where he scores 10 to 19, 45 where he scores 20 to 29, where he scores 30 to 39 uh, points, and he's had nine playoff games where he scores 40 plus points. Nine times in the postseason, postseason he scored 40 plus times. And he's also had 21 games of 10 to 14 assists and three games in the playoffs of 15 to 19 assists. Okay, that's way better numbers than anyone would ever guess. He's also had six, three or four block games in the postseason, and he's had 32, three or four steal games. Pretty nuts stats, right? For the Western Conference Finals, uh, he's made it twice. Let me keep counting three times. Four times. He's made the Western Conference Finals four times, but one of those times was the year that they, uh, one of the years that he didn't was the year they matched up with Golden State in round two, and then the the following round, you know, Golden State swept Portland. So, realistically, like they were the second best team in the West that year. So, yeah, and and Ryan, I agree, it's been a while. The, part of it is he's been injured, uh, but ultimately, I think you know, I, I think everyone likes to hate on James Harden because that's the popular thing to do. Uh, Harden's also an all-time great playmaker in the playoffs and regular season. He is, uh, for sure. Um, so, I'm excited. <laughs> CL Oracle says, D-Book has more 40-point playoff games in the finals. True. Good point, Oracle. That's a, that's a good comeback right there. I like that. Braith that says, I wanted to see Bruce Brown in Boston, and he's not a Boston fan. Well, I, I, Bruce Brown in Boston would have been really nice. I really like him, though, in Denver. I think he fits perfectly on that roster, honestly. Jared says Whiteside's a solid regular season option, rebounds and blocks, and those highlight plays sell tickets. The the one issue, Jared, with um Hassan Whiteside is he doesn't make second and third efforts ever. Uh if he's in position to get a block, he will. But if, but if he has to rotate at all, he's not getting there. Yeah, he is lazy. Aaron says Denver might be top five in the West. That is something I would relatively agree with. John Wall's expected deal to sign with the Clippers just formally announced now by Clutch Sports. So Clutch Sports announces it just now. Uh, and this is exactly what I, you know, would have figured from them. Uh, just, you know, looking at it, I, I knew that deal was done. It's just a matter of time until it get announced. JJ says Denver has had some pretty low-key moves so far. Watch out, NBA. I, I really like Bruce Brown. I do not like the Peyton Watson selection at all. Jordan says uh, James Harden dribbles too much. Well, when you're the, when you were the best ball handler in the league for – for seven straight years, it's okay to dribble a lot. AKKD says the media still talks about KD, even though he hits them back. KD definitely does get criticized a lot. Yeah, and it's all because he went to a team that won 73 games. Like, could you imagine if any other star did that? LeBron went to a team that won like 40 games the year before and had Chris Bosh sign there as well, who had never really won a playoff series with Toronto, and that was the end of the world. Durant went to a team that the year before won a championship and lost in game seven of the NBA finals. That's who he signed with, by the way. Brady says, kind of surprised that Mo Bamba stayed in Orlando. I agree. Lloyd Tackwell leaves a thumbs up. Make sure you guys hit that like button. We have 394 people watching live and only 176 likes. Let's try and get that number to 200 likes right now. LJS here says, with the Spurs rebuilding full swing, will they trade Pirtle, McDermott, Richardson? I would like them to. If they're gonna re if they're going to rebuild, they might as well go for it. Jard says Clutch Sports has a hold on the NBA. Yes, yes, he does. Uh, Clutch Sports is an incredible. Uh, Yusuf, Yusuf Nurkic getting four year 70 was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Richard says, as an SGM, I would trade Kyrie to the Pistons and KD to the Magic. I think it's just ridiculous how trades are demanded these days. I get what you're saying, but, you know, ultimately – you know, that's not going to happen. Uh, those teams aren't going to give good offers for them. So we will see what else happens here. Uh, looking back at uh, Brandon here, he says Toronto gets even longer with another six foot nine player. All they need another depth score off the bench and they're good. I'd say I, I think so as well. I think they're in a, a really good position. I'd like to see them trade for KD. KD would push them over the top for sure, but uh, we'll see. Great. That's uh, thoughts on Lakers signing younger players rather than old heads like last season. I like it. Uh, I felt like they should have done this last year. Uh, they needed to make those moves and, and get younger and more athletic and they're doing it finally. So it's definitely good. Then uh, banana says Denver should trade Jamal Murray for Lonzo ball. I don't think that Denver would do that. Uh, I don't think that they have any interest in doing that. Aaron says, I'm not slandering stuff, but truthfully, I don't know if he's going to be able to take down Kawhi when Kawhi has the better team Clippers versus Warriors will be a bloodbath. 
Yeah, and and Curry's one of the best players to ever play the game, and Kawhi Leonard is still that dude. So if, if the if the uh, Clippers are healthy, they're going to be tough to beat. That's what I'm going to say. Cruz Cole says the Warriors could use Richardson. Yeah, I think so. Richardson could help them. <laughs> it's funny. I'm setting all the. Uh, it's funny because all the criticism. <laughs> AKKD says criticism against KD is more about people not liking his personality than his game. Oh, no, no. Um, if you look at his game, there's fundamental areas where he's not as good as James Harden. If you want to talk about that, and I love to talk about James Harden's the better ball handler. James Harden's the better passer. Uh, those, those are two really important aspects of basketball. James Harden is realistically the better actual shot creator. Now, who's the better shot maker? Kevin Durant is. He's a better shooter. He's a better scorer in some ways than than James Harden. If you look at who's a better slasher, that is easily James Harden. If you're comparing the primes of their career, James Harden, nobody in the league could stop him from getting to the rim. Kevin Durant, yes, Kevin Durant gets to the rim well. James Harden did it better. Uh, Harden was way better uh, in a lot of areas than Kevin Durant is. Now, was he as good of a shot maker or just a pure shooter? No, which is why Kevin Durant is still right there in terms of being one of the best players in the world. And I think him and James Harden were very close and very comparable in terms of their overall talent. Uh, so, no, there is criticism against Kevin Durant in terms of his game. He's not a, a great on-ball perimeter defender. Most of his defensive plays come off the ball because he's a weak side to help guy in rotation. Uh, and, you know, like people who know basketball can criticize Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's not a perfect player. He's not. He's a really great offensive player who's near perfect offensively. But he's not. He's not perfect. There are, there should be, and there is criticisms against Kevin Durant that makes some sense. Eli says, so this could be KD having an epiphany about himself and realizing that he needs to be with players that he that can lead that can better lead. Maybe this whole this whole Nets thing was a, a mess from the beginning. So uh, you know, obviously, like when you look at the the whole situation, you don't want to to sign up for a headache with Kyrie Irving. I think that's that's pretty obvious, honestly. Oracle says, bro, I'm glad that my son's drafted a European guy like Dragon Bender over Luca. Dude, the son's making great decisions out there. Lil Tree says, you think Orlando trades Mo Bamba? I think OKC needs a center and he fits with the younger players. Well, they just signed him, so they can't trade him until December 15th, technically, because of the CBA. So uh, they have to hold on to him at least for the next six months and two weeks. Or five months and two weeks, excuse me. Ryan Hillier says, Harden... Failed, though, because that ship was going down. His absence obviously affected the swing, but not as much as the records will let you believe. Yeah, I, I mean, I think he saw the writing on the wall that Brooklyn was about to get wrecked. Brooklyn was falling apart as everyone was there, uh, and he got out of there first. Raul says Jamal Murray to the Raptors would be such a dream. Yes, it would, but I don't think it's going to happen. Patrick Bateman says, do you think the Warriors need to sign a replacement for GP2, or will Moody and Weatherspoon step up into that role? More so Moody than Weatherspoon, I think. I think Moody's going to fill some of that role. Not not quite as defensive, but their offense should take a, a boost from that. Unlimited range says facts. LeBron to Miami should not be as hated as KD's decision to Golden State, especially when KD had Russ and LeBron had no one. Literally, yeah. LeBron went from playing with Mo Williams to, yes, again, it was a really good team in Miami, but they had no depth. They sacrificed everything to to get Bosh and LeBron in free agency. That's, that's what's so different. Golden State was able to keep a lot of their players – because they signed Kevin Durant in a year where the salary cap jumped by about 20 million. So they had cap space. They were already really great. And they had extra players already on that roster. They didn't have to sacrifice all of their depth. Now they had to sacrifice some of it, but that team, for the most part, they were able to keep their three best players. Miami didn't have three best players, really. They had Michael Beasley on that roster. And, you know, they, they, they had to make a lot of moves and they were starting Joel Anthony at center and Mario Chalmers was their starting point guard with Mike Bibby, then ultimately taking the starting point guard job. That heat team was not nearly as good as golden state was. Uh, and the only reason he, the heat were able to win a championship is how good LeBron was honestly with Wade and, and Bosch played a good role there. That team was really good. Don't get me wrong, but golden state was way better. It, it wasn't even close. Memer clipped you said, what are the Warriors doing, bro? Don't worry. Don't worry about them. They've got the young guys. They've got Kaminga and Moody. Those players are going to take some of those minutes lost by uh, GP2 and uh, also P Porter Jr.'s departures. Don't worry. Braden says, who should the Warriors sign? They don't necessarily need to go out and sign anybody. Uh, I don't think that there's a huge rush for them to go make a move. Remember, they're so far in the luxury tax as well that every signing they make costs three times what it is. So if you sign a player for $2 million, it costs you $6 million. That's a lot of money to pay for some of these 
players who maybe don't really swing the needle that much. Michael Orlando says Orlando has been really smart with their cap this and previous years. They're lining themselves up for that 2024 free agency, no doubt. And, and if they are, that's awesome for them. We'll see what they're able to do in that. It's, it's still Orlando. Um, they don't tend to make the biggest name signings. Of course, they got super close to Tim Duncan, and then they told him that his family can't fly on the plane, and that was a mistake. Uh, so ultimately, you know, Orlando's a, a team that with their positioning right now, uh, I like where their future is headed. They still have, you know, two picks next year, one from the Bulls and one from Orlando for one, their own. So they're, they're in a good spot. I like Paulo Boncaro there. Even if they don't get a free agent, they'll be okay. Cruz Cole says Moody should be able to step up. I agree. Uh, Jonah says only JaVale McGee and Theo Pinson. Let me go ahead and find that again. I lost it. <laughs> uh, I saw a funny comment. Uh, here, uh, Albert or uh, Jonah says only JaVale McGee and Pinson. We need a big offseason move. Well, we've already made it right. Christian Wood. Don't forget. We got Christian Wood. Albert Diaz says we're for number two draft pick to be traded, traded and traded. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it happens though. Sometimes we'll see Katie going to Golden State was dirty, joined the best team. Then he left to try to destroy them dirty. Now he inks with Brooklyn and is again, destroying them. So dirty. He's destroyed a bunch of teams. He keeps destroying organizations. True sports live says John wall for six mil annually is a steal. Uh, Ian, the thing is, even if it's not, even if it, even if John Wall doesn't play that great, it doesn't hurt them. There's no risk. Mr. Rudy Poo says Tobias Harris trade ideas. Uh, if there's anything, it would be likely to Orlando. Brady Thompson says Patrick Baldwin about to go crazy now that Otto Porter left. I if if Patrick Baldwin ends up ever scoring more than ten points a game in his career, I would be shocked. Aaron says utility is low key uh, a Harden fan. Uh, yeah, I I do like James Harden. Uh, I think James Harden is the most hated player in the NBA. Uh, I think that there's, you know, pretty good evidence and substance to that, that he gets more hate than anybody in the entire league, despite being someone who's averaged 36 points a game in his career and didn't win, a, didn't win MVP the year he averaged 36. Uh, and his team was good. So people talk about empty numbers. I mean, the guy puts up numbers and wins and still doesn't get credit. It, it's unbelievable to me. AK, AKKD says, okay, so what? Paul George can't be the leader of a championship team either, but he doesn't get hate for it. Uh, Katie, I don't think you really, really were paying attention. Maybe you're living under a rock when after uh, Paul George shot the basket against the Denver Nuggets that hit the side of the backboard, uh, everyone was calling him PG 13%. If you, if you think Paul George isn't getting hate all the time, you're ridiculous. I, uh, that's, it's a little crazy. Um, Patrick Bateman says, do you think Moody will be good enough to step up? Uh, and in turn, we don't need to sign a replacement for GP2. I think so. I, I think that we're going to see uh, a huge step up from Moses Moody and Kaminga this next year. Thundercat says, it's easier to get to the rim when you're seven foot and have six inches on the guy guarding you. And the thing is, Harden still gets to the rim more. Uh, so <laughs> Bishop says, after passing and dribbling, Harden's only better at eating. Um, okay. Like, are passing and dribbling not two of the main three components of offensive basketball? Like, think, oh, and he's a better finisher. He's better at getting to the rim. So, literally, there's there's four segments to offensive basketball. There's there's shooting, finishing, passing, dribbling. Harden's better at three of them. Now, Durant is so much better as a shooter that it's still a close comparison. But Harden's better at three of the four aspects of basketball offensively. So. Mr. Rudy says utility's a high key Harden fan. He's been said that already. Ah, I am. I, I'll defend him because he's a good player and people hate him for no reason. So Alex says Harden's big weakness is his inability to stay motivated and stay in shape. And I agree with that. If you go back and watch him in Houston, though, when he was like he looked in much better shape and he was so dominant. I, I people don't understand how dominant James Harden was. One of the most dominant players we've ever seen. Albert Diaz says, What is Katie's weakness? Well, he doesn't defend on the ball. He's inconsistent in terms of what you're going to get from him uh, on a year to year basis. You never really know if he's going to buy into your culture. You don't know if he's going to be a part of your organization or not. You don't know if he's going to bounce on you. He is unreliable in a lot of ways. Now, from a basketball standpoint, the, the biggest issue is he's not a great on ball perimeter defender. He's OK. Uh, and he's not in a, a phenomenal ball handler. He's good. And he's not a phenomenal slasher. He's good. Like there's not a lot of flaws in terms of like an actual true weakness, but if you're comparing him to somebody who's literally great in pretty much every other area offensively as well, there's not really much of a difference uh, in terms of their overall skill sets offensively and how good both of them are 
Um, there's a reason that we've seen James Harden put up 35 points a game in the in in multiple seasons. You know, he's he's a he's a big big time player still. Like, and and the thing is, I'm not saying KD sucks. And I, there's a reason I'm talking about teams willing to be willing to trade multiple assets for him. He's still awesome. He's a great player. But I'm just saying myself, I would not trade for a 34 year old who has a long string of stuff in the last six years that have not pointed to him being a great addition for a roster um, unless you're golden state and can win with him right away. Ace says he's a big Harden fan. Love, love that. Uh, Jonas says we need to trade for OG. Uh, he's obviously a Mavs fan there with that hashtag Miffle. Darren no Norsworthy says only Rockets fan know who Harden truly is. He's a bucket. Uh, S Swift says, do you think Raptors have a chance at KD after auto signing? Maybe uh, I wouldn't think that's um <laughs> I don't think that's a uh, uh, an issue at all. Bucks says, do you think Lakers get Kyrie? Probably. Richard says, what's your opinion on Raptors signing Otto Porter? Like it for them. They get some depth. They get a, a really nice player uh, that fits kind of what they're looking to do. So I, overall, I think it's a really good signing for them. JJ says, most overlooked signing, I think it's Daniil House to the Sixers. That or Amir Coffey to the Clippers. I think those two signings are both really phenomenal. Also, you could argue Traveling Queen to the 76ers is really good as well. Uh, those are the ones I like. Schmuddy says, John Wall officially signs with the Clippers. Two-year deal for taxpayer mid-level. Really good signing for the Clippers. Uh, and this is the benefit of having a really rich owner. You can pay the luxury tax, and that's what they're willing to do, and it's, it's awesome to see. Aaron says, call me crazy, but I don't think Kyrie to the Lakers makes them anything more than a six seed, maybe five. I agree. Maybe not even more than a seven seed, honestly. Ace says, what does taxpayer mid-level mean? Taxpayer mid-level. Okay, so Ace here, there's there's two different mid-level exceptions. Teams that are not in the tax get to have a non-taxpayer mid-level exception, which means you can sign a player for any amount of years from one to four years, and it can be uh, around $10.26 million annually. That's how much you can fit him into the contract on. Uh, for that first year, $10.26 million is how much they need to make. Uh, that number or below. Taxpayer mid-level, this is the way, this is the NBA's way of hurting teams who are in the tax. They can only offer about 6.5 million. So about three and a half million dollars less than teams that are not in the tax. That way there's some competitive balance there and it gives teams that are smaller markets who are less likely to pay a better chance at signing some of these guys using a little bit more money. So uh, that's what the taxpayer mid-level does. Hopefully that makes sense. Each team gets one a year and it's dependent on their tax status, if they're in the tax or not. Unlimited range says, is, Ty, is Thibel getting traded or maybe a package with Harris? I'm not sure. I don't have a great read on Philly. If there's something big planned there, they'll make a move, but otherwise they could just roll it back. Mini Hoop Production says, what seed are the Timberwolves next year? I, I think probably an eight seed, uh, if I had to guess. I think the Clippers, you know, being back healthy, pushed them down a spot. Um, and maybe the, maybe a nine because the Pelicans could jump them as well. But we'll see. I, I, I think the Wolves are right in that eight or nine range, um, which I know sounds maybe a little critical. I know you're a Wolves fan, so don't don't take it as hate. They're a good team. Uh, but there's some some things that I'm not certain on yet about D'Lo and, and who's all going to be there and everything. So that, that's my safe answer, eight or nine seed, which is okay. That's good. Making the playoffs or playing is, is good for Minnesota. Gremlin says Spurs Charlotte pick is top 16 protected in 2023, top 14, 2024, top 14, 2025, then conveys to uh two second round. Okay. Well, thank you. I, I, you know, I, the, the issue is when I'm, when I'm refreshing on some of this stuff, I, I look at some of the details on this one website that I use and, and sometimes they're not very clear on everything. Um, still, even if that conveys, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, thank you for putting that in there, though. It's not a nerdy detail. That's that's fine. I, I appreciate hearing that. Jakob here says, do you think Miami Heat can get Kevin Durant? I think so, possibly. Junior Sanchez, will Katie join the Mavericks? I'd say there's maybe a 3% chance of that. Banana says, OKC fan here. Giddy plus elite teammates is legit. Yes, it is. Unlimited Range wants to know who signed GP2. It was the Portland Trailblazers. Ryan here says, so we just accepting the play-in as part of the NBA now? Yes, we are, unfortunately. I was not a fan of the play-in, but it's, it's worked out pretty decent, um, so it is. Aaron says, yo, Utility, if you had to put a future bet on most improved player, who would you take? I would take Devin Vassell from the San Antonio Spurs. I would bet on him winning most improved player of the year. 
AKKD says Draymond admitted they needed KD against the Cavs on his last podcast. Okay. Just because he said it out loud doesn't make it true. Uh, again, I could say that the sky is purple and Draymond Green could say that, and it doesn't mean the sky is actually purple or orange or whatever color you want to say it is. The sky is blue. The Warriors won a championship without Kevin Durant. The, Kevin Durant has never won a championship without the Golden State Warriors. And until that changes, that's what I'm going to keep saying. Steven Tavor, uh, Tamora says Clippers four seed. Probably, but I think come playoff time, they'll turn it up. Uh, Matthew says this just in. KD was uh, was under the influence uh, and didn't want a trade. Uh, that is not true. But Daniel says, do you think chance of Bulls getting Durant is higher than 10%? No, I think it's probably hovering around, you know, 5 to 10%, somewhere in that range. Jared said, what's the end of the Blazers? I'm thinking 6 to 8, probably in that range. Maybe nine. Yeah, so, I mean, with the Blazers, too, they could push the Wolves down even a spot. I, I kind of forgot about that. That, that could be an option. Uh, Bishop wants to know, can the Celtics use the $17 million uh, trade exception that they have? They could. The issue is if they do it now, they're going to enter the luxury tax, and then I'm not sure if they want to do that or not, especially after the likely signing of Danilo Gallinari. Um, they might just roll roll that over, and if they don't use it, I don't think it would be the end of the world. I know Celtics fans are going to say, oh, we want to use it. Last time they used a, a trade exception was for Evan Fournier, and he got picked on for an entire series against Brooklyn by James Harden. So, um, yeah. AKKD says, I think Celtics should keep Brown and trade Tatum. Trade Tatum for Kevin Durant. Tatum and KD together are both more offensive-minded, but with KD and Brown, you have a guy to, to be the anchor on both ends. Uh, Tatum's a better defensive player than Jalen Brown. That's just flat out the truth. Um, K Tatum is better defensively than Jalen. Uh, that wasn't true when they came into the league, but it is true now. Tatum has improved so much on both ends of the floor. Uh, I, I think if they're going to trade Tatum for Kevin Durant, the Nets would need to give up picks. Uh, I would I would not trade Tatum for Kevin Durant right now. I would not do that. B B BP says, my issue with Harden is that he does nothing when he's off ball. doesn't cut or set screens. He just stands outside the three-point line. Also plays no D other than that. I agree with utility. Well, and, and that's, you know, this is the thing. I'm not saying Harden's a perfect player either. He's not. He's got some serious flaws. And yes, he is lazy when he doesn't have the ball. It's kind of hard to win with him. Part of that, part of that is, you now the one thing here too, let's think about who he's had coach him the last, you know, decade. He's had Mike D'Antoni, whose entire offensive creativity is pick and roll and, okay, James Harden, go ISO. That, that was his whole offensive scheme there. Uh, and when he felt really crazy, he had a little Jeff Green dribble handoff into the corner, and James Harden had a moving pick and roll. That that was his entire offensive playbook, uh, unfortunately. Then he went to the Brooklyn Nets, where Mike D'Antoni was an assistant, and Steve Nash was the coach. And again, the entire offense was, okay, go good players, go be great. Let's go be great and go win. Good job, guys. We'll cheer for me from the sideline. We're not actually going to coach you and have offensive sets or plays because we're not creative, and we just want our good players to have the ball. Okay. Gets into Philly, and Doc Rivers is notorious for not being a good offensive coach. Doc Rivers doesn't adjust. Doc Rivers was was copying some of that D'Antoni screen stuff out of the corner with the dribble handoff. Did that for like three weeks after Harden got there. Harden was really good those first three weeks, and then stopped doing it for no reason. And again, just asked him, okay, Harden, go be great. Go isolate, pick the top of the key. Oh, and we'll bring and beat up for a pick and roll sometimes. That's not good coaching. That's not good offense. It's like, I agree with you that, you know, Harden needs to be more engaged when he is off the ball. He could do more stuff, but at the same time, he's had coaches who don't challenge him to ever do that. Don't make him do anything and don't have any offensive identity outside of Harden being a good basketball player. But, and, and defensively, the, the issue there with Philly too is, you know, they want to drew Eubanks returning with the Portland trailblazers. I like that for Portland. He played well there. Um, I thought the Raptors were going to get him at the, uh, trade deadline then they waived him and I thought that was a mistake because I think Eubanks would have helped Portland as well but or it would have helped Toronto as well but Portland keeps him here I think that's a good move Eubanks solid big but um I like I agree with you defensively there's some issues there uh for sure Riley says Lakers package for Kyrie would be what the first Westbrook and THT I feel like there's no way the Nets take that especially when I'm sure they could find a better deal I don't think there's a better deal Riley uh, I really don't. THC is a young player. He's only 21 years old. Westbrook is a good player still who can help you win games, which the Nets don't have any reason to tank right now. They don't have any other draft picks. And then you get that future first. Teams are not – Kyrie is – Kyrie's expiring, and he's highly unpredictable. If Kyrie Irving retired tomorrow, no one would be surprised. We'd be like, wow, did he really do that? It kind of seems like something Kyrie would do. Is that real? Is that real? 
we we would be like shocked but not surprised if that makes sense um and when we're let's let's think back to the trade for Kawhi Leonard when he had one year left on his deal they traded DeMar DeRozan Jakob Pertl and one first seems pretty similar to a Westbrook THT and a first and the thing is that got Kawhi Leonard not Kyrie Irving Kawhi was way better than Kyrie is uh and way more reliable uh, even though he's coming off a year where he was injured still way more reliable so Seb says next move for the Raptors any news on Gary Harris he would be perfect Gary Harris actually stayed with the Orlando Magic Seb so unfortunately Gary Harris a player who I thought would have been nice for Toronto not going to fit there but I think they could still look for some guards on the minimum Albert says this in-depth info is way better than traditional cable cable TV thank you Albert for that I'm glad you guys are enjoying uh, Ryan says Gary's so underrated. I think Gary Harris is a solid player. We'll see if he gets traded at the deadline. I think I think that's going to be a player. When I'm live for the uh, trade deadline, uh, I'm going to be watching for him uh, already. So you guys can already you know book that in, write that down in, in pen somewhere that uh, I'll be uh, streaming for NBA trade deadline day, and we'll be talking about how Gary Harris is likely on the move. <laughs> Aaron says my top two player in this draft was Ivy and, were Ivy and Matherin. I think they're both going to be all stars. Hard to tell on anyone else. Uh, I like I liked Ivy. Ivy was number one for me. Matherin was number six for me. I like Matherin. I'm not sure if he's going to be an all-star, though. I, I think he's going to be good. I think Ivy could be an all-star. Elias Aguirre says, if the Suns don't get KD, then where does Aiton go? And what do we get for Aiton? I'm not really sure at this point. I have no idea what's going to happen with... Uh, with Aiden. I, I think his free agency is really wild. Maybe do we see a dual sign and trade where Miles Bridges goes to Phoenix and Aiden goes to Charlotte? That could make some sense. I'm not sure if I love it though for either side either. Grom says sources tell me Katie's market value is two first with heavy protections. Look for Thunder to make a move. Sources, trust me, bro. That's that's always the best uh thing this time of year. You get all the people on Twitter tweeting about, oh, this guy's going to get traded and then nothing ever happens, which is why I was surprised when the DeJounte Murray trade happened because, you know, there's always a little buzz. You know, D'Angelo Russell's getting traded. Clint Capella's getting traded for number 19 on draft night. All this, all that, and then nothing actually happens. And you're like, okay, were these sources actually accurate? Were there actual discussions? Or was it just someone thinking they knew something and tweeting without knowing? Uh, so the, the trust me, bro, there's a hilarious tweet, Grom, or a, a hilarious comment, Grom. Vincent Film says, who will Warriors pick up in free agency? Maybe nobody, but they don't need to. Uh, they, they don't need to pick up anyone. They got Moody, Kaminga coming, Wiseman, if he plays this year. Uh, they, they've got the young guys taking up some of those minutes. Edward Sim says, I'm kind of new here, but mad props to you, bro. I listen to you all the time. Appreciate what you do. Thank you so much, Edward. Glad to have you watching the content here on the channel. Make sure you guys go check out some of the other videos. We're also going to start some more at 2023 NBA draft coverage soon with some scouting profiles. We'll probably you know, wiggle in some mocks in there, not as frequently as we were doing toward the end of the 2022 draft cycle, but every once in a while a mock will pop up in there. So make sure you guys watch out for that as well. Davion Weems says, what do you think about the Pistons signings? I am very disappointed. Davion, don't be because you guys have flexibility and that's really important. Having flexibility is a good thing. And going into next off season, you guys are going to have a lot of cap space again to add around Jay Nivey and Kate Cunningham and Jalen Duran. And the nice thing is you're going to have a better idea of what you need because you've had a year to watch these guys play together and, and see kind of what you're missing from that team. Uh, and true Elias, thank you for that as well. They can't trade Tatum because of Simmons. That's a, another good point there. Uh, Zlatan says THJ for Brogdon. That could make some sense. THJ fits really well with Rick Carlisle. Uh, if they're going to make a move, that's the one I would like to see them do. They probably have to give up a couple seconds with that, though, as well for the Mavs. Bentley says, I'm back. Welcome back, Bentley. Glad to have you in here. Like Ryan says, I think Tatum is worth insanely more than Kevin Durant right now. He's younger. Uh, I, I think Tatum is one of the few players in the league that are un, uh, unattainable. No matter how many draft picks you have, you can't get Jason Tatum. You're not going to be able to. Mr. Rudy says, uh, can't trade for Tatum. He has that same rookie contract as Ben Simmons. Yeah, he's got the designated rookie contract. So uh, you got the designated rookie extension, uh, which was well-deserved. Steven says, what if the Pelicans trade for Kevin Durant? The Nets get uh, Zion, Jose Alvarado, Larry Nance, and a first-round pick. Uh, they can't do this. Zion Williamson just signed a designated extension himself uh, and can't be traded now for a year. Bishop says, Tatum just started playing D in February. I, I mean, yeah, he locked in in February, but he's when he's doing it, he's better. Uh, I don't think there's any question about that. 
Raman says, how much percent chance that Katie will go to Atlanta? I, I would say maybe 10% chance. Robin Lopez has agreed to a one-year deal with the Cleveland Cavaliers. It's a pretty solid signing for them. He's one of the few depth bigs that actually can provide something. Uh, ITK says, FSPN. We got uh, utility sports, Sheldon Rocks. Well, thank you so much for that, ITK. I uh, appreciate that. Greg Clips says, Stern wants to do in-season tournament. How do you think that's going to work? Well, David Stern is not the GM anymore. Uh, so Adam Silver wants to do an in-season tournament, uh, which is uh, funny. I was not going to – I did not think I was going to talk about David Stern today, but here we are. Uh, I think that in-season tournament's going to be ridiculous. I'm not a fan of it at all, especially if there's draft pick compensation for it. Oh, my goodness. Please no. Riley says, seen rumblings of Mavs wanting Kyrie. Would hate that. I would too. Not – not uh not happy with that uh bishop says the jalen brown hate is nuts i'm not hating on jalen brown by saying tatum's a better defender i'm i i don't know why i said that i i just think jalen brown is not as good of a defender jalen brown's a phenomenal player uh the only point was that tatum is not going to get traded because he's defensively really improved and is a better player than Jalen Brown. I, I don't think I said anything false there, Bishop. So if you're, if you're going to get all upset about, you know, me th thinking that I'm hating on Jalen Brown, I'm not. Uh, you're just mishearing what I'm saying. Raul says uh, Nets won't be able to get Zion because he just got an extension. Ben and Zion cannot be on the same team due to contract issues. Exactly. That's exactly what's going on. Uh, Ryan here says Harden was great ISO player. Though D'Antoni wasn't terrible. In fact, Mike uh, is the reason you and Harden fans love Harden. I disagree with that as well. Um, D'Antoni didn't coach Houston the entire time he was there. They also had um, Kevin McHale for a little bit, and Harden was still putting up triple doubles. Uh, still doing his thing. I liked him. Harden's first game in Houston uh, was not coached by Mike D'Antoni, and he scored 37 points in his first game there. Uh, after the wizard GM, after the great GM, Sam Presti decided that he'd rather have Serge Ibaka than James Harden, by the way. I, I agree. You, you banks have slept on big though, Ryan completely agree with that. Peter says is OKC uh, trade right for Michich or bring him to the NBA. We'll, we'll see. I, I need to watch more about Michich to, to see what's kind of going on there. First picks from Atlanta are unprotected. Correct. Uh, the 2025 and 2027 ones are yes. Bob Charlie says, whoever hates on Jalen Brown or casuals Brown showed more heart than Tatum. Again, I'm not hating on on Jalen Brown uh, just because I said that Tatum's a better defender, uh, which I think when they're both locked in, he is. Uh, I'm not about to try and defend myself about that. I'm not hating on Jalen Brown. Uh, there's no reason to hate Jalen Brown. <laughs> Albert says, why do they keep hiring Doc Rivers? Goodness, I don't know. Doc Rivers is terrible. I, I would not hire Doc Rivers as a coach. Uh, Riley says, that's fair. The fact that Kyrie could decide to just not play because he feels like it kind of tanks his value. Yeah, right. It's just like, it, it doesn't feel like it's good value because of how talented Kyrie is, but ultimately Kyrie's got stuff going on up here. Right. That says Brown Brown was my finals MVP. Um, I lost where that was. There you go. Uh, let's go back up here. Brown was my finals MVP. If the Celtics ended up winning, he really showed out this playoffs. He did. And he's an awesome young player. I, I just think realistically, if the Celtics were going to trade anybody, it would not be Tatum. I, I don't think Tatum is getting traded anywhere. You have to remember what happened against Milwaukee as well and against Miami. Tatum Tatum carried them through Milwaukee. He did. Great Club says, will the Lakers have to give up AD to get Kyrie? Uh, do you think that will win a chip? No, uh, they're not going to give up Anthony Davis to get Kyrie Irving. <laughs> ITK says, Net, Nets tanking for Victor Wembanyama. Well, unfortunately, the Rockets would get that pick if they, if they do. So uh, that would work pretty good. Robert Perry says Harden to the Celtics and Horford to the Magic. Don't think that's going to happen. Bob Charlie says at Utility Sports, Raptors should go after Kevon Looney. He was a great rebounder and inside presence for the Warriors. It would definitely help Toronto. I don't think they will, though. I think he ultimately stays in Golden State. Athen wants to know if I think McGee will actually be a regular starter. I think yes. I think so. And I think part of the plan there is to rotate between – McGee and Dwight Powell, they're going to both play like 24 minutes a game. Bray says, I don't think Miles will be picked up. Trust me, he will be. I know it seems like he shouldn't be, and I agree with the fact that he shouldn't be, but he will. Some team will sign him. I think it'll be maybe Charlotte, but I think, you know, a sign and trade could make sense. 
What is better, Jalen Brunson or Aiden Bridges and Johnson? Or, oh, Jalen Brown or – I see, J, I keep reading JB as Jalen Brunson. Okay, so Jalen Brown or Aiden Bridges and Johnson for KD. <sighs> That's tough because Brown is clearly the best player out of all four of those players. But Aiden Bridges and Johnson's like a good young core that helps – them actually have like a, a decent set of players. So really, I, I don't think you could go wrong getting either. I, I really don't. I don't even know if Boston would want to give up Jalen Brown either. That's the thing. So uh, I think Aiden Bridges and uh, Johnson would be the more realistic uh, option for sure. King Kane says Warriors are probably locking up Looney right now and not letting him go. That's what I feel like as well. Aaron says Suns the favorite in 2023. Dur Durant confirmed. I mean, if they get Durant, they'll probably be the favorite, yeah. Steven says, I thought Brooklyn said they wanted to go All-Stars for KD. They wanted two All-Stars for – well, yeah, I'm sure. You know, that's – I'm. you know, if I was, you know, live streaming, I'm sure I'd want, you know, all the perfect setup. You know, like, if, if I'm getting a if I'm getting a, a contract somewhere working, I would love to get $500,000 a year. Just because you want something doesn't mean you're going to get it. They're not going to get two All-Stars for Kevin Durant. That's not a thing. ITK says, think you need a drink from nonstop talk to my girlfriend. That's uh that's funny there, ITK. I'm I'm still living through, I'm working through it. Uh Zerma says, shame the Knicks got Hardenstein really wanted him on the Thunder. He would have been nice. <laughs> Ryan says, man said like his girlfriend. That, that was funny, ITK. That was uh, a pretty good one. Firelike says, what position can GP2 play on the Blazers? He'll be a backup guard. He'll never play point, but he'll play, you know, the two or the three. He could play next to Simons and Dame if you want him to. He's so versatile defensively that he could guard pretty much anyone one through three, uh, at least, and sometimes even four. So he's definitely valuable. He's got the length and the the, the smarts to do it, and the foot speed. OM Reiji says, you think Raptors can get Jakob Pertle? That would be nice if they could find a way to land him again. Steven says, hey, what seed do you think the Clippers will be if they're healthy? I think the Clippers will be a top four seed in the West. Braden, what team has done the best in free agency so far, in your opinion? I think the 76ers have done really well. I think the Bucks did really well keeping all of their guys uh, and also adding Joe Ingles. Right now, I think, I'm, I'm, you know, the Nuggets, I'm not sure if I love everything they've done, but I think the Bruce Brown signing was good for them. Uh, I think... That, that's kind of my thoughts, I guess, overall. I, I think the teams that, you know, and I, I think Atlanta, even though it's not a free agency signing, getting DeJounte Murray was really good for them. Uh, I, I really like that. Stephen Harris says Kevin Durant might go to the Phoenix Suns, help Chris Paul and Devin Booker win a championship. He would definitely help them. JJ says, I like the Cavs roster right now, especially with that Rubio signing. Yeah, Cavs have done well, too. I should have mentioned them as a winner. Uh, the Cavaliers have done very well getting Rubio back and Robin Lopez. Uh, adding some veterans, I think, was definitely a, a good move for them. Bray says, uh, he's definitely untradeable, but Tatum is more tradable than Luka, Jokic, or Giannis. I agree with that. I think those are the three most untradeable players in the league right now, um, just because, you know, Luka, Jokic, Giannis, all all incredible, all incredible players. Uh, Mary he says, good for Rolo. Yeah, love to see Robin Lopez getting a job somewhere in the league. Kyler Kelsey says, as a Thunder fan, you said something about draft picks. The Thunder will win that or lose that, whatever gets them more picks. Uh, I mean... Talking about draft, I said something about draft picks. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like yes, the uh, the Thunder have a bunch of draft picks. I don't think they're going to unload them yet for a player. Steven says 76ers get Kevin Durant and Nets get Tobias Harris, Tyrese Maxey, Danny Green's not even with the Nets any with the 76ers anymore. Uh, by the way, and a first round pick. I uh, let's think about it. If you were the Nets, would you trade Kevin Durant for that package? Would you want Tobias Maxey and a first round pick? No, you wouldn't. You would want way more. Josh says, what's next if you're the Raptors? Uh, I think right now you explore some Kevin Durant trades, see if you can get something done. But if you can't, it's not a big deal. Uh, we are going to be live here for another 15 minutes or so, um, maybe maybe about 10 minutes here. Actually, I've got to, I do have to work today, so unfortunately I can't be live all day long uh, like I was yesterday. I was hoping to be today, uh, but I do have um, another obligation where I have to go to work. So hopefully you guys don't mind too much. Go check out some of the other content on the channel after the live stream is done. Eric Espinosa says, Katie and Kyrie to the Spurs. Yes, sir. Katie and Kyrie to the Spurs. That would be crazy. Probably not going to happen, though, Eric, but it would be nuts. Edward Sims wants to know, is Kai Soto any good? 
Uh, I don't know. Not really. Patrick says, let me go back up to Patrick's. I The software I'm using just doesn't do with the things I want it to do sometimes. It says, at Utility Sports, do you think there's a, any chance TJ Warren could come to Golden State? He would have to obviously take a deal lower than his standard, but you think he'd want a ring. Yeah, I mean, that would be a pretty good option uh, for him. That's a, a good replacement there for uh, for Otto Porter, but I'm not sure if anything's going to to happen there. I would uh, make sure you guys go give me a follow on Instagram. I've got some clips of me playing basketball on there. I would love to uh, to have you guys follow me on the IG. I know some of you already have been. Make sure to go follow. Link is in the description for that. Also, go follow on Twitter as well if you haven't already. Uh, no more Kings wants to know. Do you think Cade was snubbed the Rookie of the Year award? No, I don't think so. But I think Cade's still going to be the best rookie from that class. Dump, drum drop wants to know what's Peyton Watson ceiling. Um. That's really hard to nail down. Uh, for Peyton Watson, I think you're looking at an athletic wing who can cut off the ball. Honestly, I think he ends up becoming somewhat of a Royce O'Neal type, uh, but he could end up becoming better than that. So I, I don't know if I have a good ceiling for him, uh, but that's kind of where I'm at. 11 Banana says, I want Denver to make a little change defensively that fits them. How about MPJ for Ben Simmons? Definitely could be uh, something worth looking into at some point. NBA is testing a new take foul in the NBA Summer League. So transition take fouls. Uh, okay. For purposes of this rule, uh, the penalty, a personal foul and team foul shall be assessed and one free throw shall be awarded to the offended team when a defender commits a transition take foul. The free throw may be attempted by any player on the offended team in the game at the time the foul was committed. The offended team shall be awarded the ball as well on the sideline at the nearest point where they play, where the play, where play was interrupted, but no nearer to the baseline than the free throw line extended. Interesting. So definitely a, a huge piece of information there. Uh, and honestly, a, a really good, really good um, situation here that I, I think is actually going to be really important. Uh, I, I, I think this is a really good piece of inf information here and testing a good rule change that is much needed regarding take fouls. I am tweeting this as well right now. So give me one second, making sure the Twitter gets the post out there. Uh, just so you guys can go follow us on there and see everything. I think even when I'm not live on the channel, I usually tweet a lot of my thoughts on there. 1980 Pennywise says, man, you're doing a good job. I enjoy, especially your speed. Glad I found you. Glad you're in here. Uh, thank you so much Pennywise for hanging out with us today, Riley. And, and all the other days that you've been in here as well. I, I know you're not just a first time viewer here today. Jordan G says Pelicans wouldn't trade Zion or Brandon Ingram. They can't trade Zion. They wouldn't trade Ingram. I agree. Uh, Camden says, do you, who do you think the most underrated player in this free agency class is? Uh, I think one of the most underrated players in the class was Trevlin Queen and also uh, Amir Coffey. Both of them have already gotten signed, though, but uh, both of them were really good signings. Mini Hoop Productions wants to know, could John Collins go to the Timberwolves? That kind of fits the four-man they're looking for. I'm also hearing rumblings that Rudy Gobert could potentially be traded to Minnesota. Nothing concrete on it yet, but definitely something to watch for. AKKD wants to know, who's the best player in the world for y'all right now? KD, that's a great question. I'm glad to have you in here, by the way. I know you know you and I were disagreeing on stuff. It doesn't work. That's the thing. We're talking basketball, right? Uh, I love the fact that you know I can share my honest opinions. And even if I disagree with you guys, you don't get all upset and, and angry. And when you guys disagree with me, I don't get all upset and angry. You know, I just voice my opinion. You guys voice yours. And if we don't agree, we don't agree. It's the, That's the best part about time basketball. You don't have to agree all the time. And I'm going to tell you right now, most front offices have internal conflicts all the time about who, who they think they should sign or trade for or draft. It, it happens all the time. Stephen Harris says Doc Rivers might get fired next year if Philly doesn't make the Eastern Conference Finals. I would probably bet on that. Best in the world has to be Giannis, according to Ryan. That's probably a, a really safe, safe answer. I would agree. Aaron says there's so much par parity and talent in the NBA more than ever right now. Yes, and Kevin Durant might upset all of that if he gets traded to a team like Phoenix or Miami. Nick says, will the Spurs try to make a play for Sexton? I could see that. Uh, I do not want Colin Sexton on the Mavs, though, Wowzer. I do not. XYNCODM says, any news for Thomas Bryant? Nothing yet. I'm kind of surprised his market's been pretty slow. Uh, I think a bunch of teams should be interested in him. I, I would like the Lakers to sign him if they could bring him back, which is funny because they originally had him. Braith that says, I agree. Tatum is a better player 100%. I was just saying that Brown was better, the better player against the world. And I agree with that. And, and part of that is, 
Um, it comes down to scheme. You know, the the Warriors are more focused on slowing down Tatum and stopping Tatum than they are Brown, which is why being a second option is is infinitely easier than being the number one guy because in the scouting report, the team is focused the most on the number one player. BP says, yep, Bridges will get signed. That's the world we live in. They care more about selling tickets. Any of us, though, we locked up and losing all, our, all of our jobs. Honestly, it's the truth. Uh, it's it's a real bummer. Uh, it It's very disheartening, honestly. Think about our society. Aaron Scuda says, Colin Sexton, a clutch client. He going to the Lakers. They already signed. They have already have about seven players with the same agent. It makes it easy, right? You get a call from the Lakers front office. He says, which one? And they say, LeBron this time. Or they say, Sexton. All right, you know, they, they'll do whatever. Oracle says, apparently the Nets want my son's four first round picks. Geez, I guess that's okay if we can keep some of our young guys. I mean, for the Suns, if you win a championship, it's all worth it. Ryan says, we going to talk about the big man, Thomas Bryant. What are we talking about? How much can he bench? <laughs> yeah, honestly, true. Uh, he, he's probably going to be pretty cheap, um, I would think, in free agency. Bray says, do you think Andrew Wiggins, Miles Bridges matchup, wherever he goes, will be intense and more aggressive because of the Bridges drama? Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm not not exactly sure on on that matchup and all the ins and outs of of their rivalry or or whatever this is akkd says can't argue with Giannis. i agree k ingram says the philadelphia rockets honestly so true <laughs> itk that's a funny comment about uh abdul jabbar there zlatan says d vincenzo to the mavs i actually wouldn't mind that gives them another defensive guard that would be good KS wants to know the top five remaining free agents. So let's go through my top five guys right now. Who else is still out there that is an a good free agent? Uh, obviously, James Harden's there, but we're not going to count him. He's going to basically just re-sign with the uh, Philadelphia 76ers. He's basically off the market. I don't think he's taking any meetings with any other teams. So Outside of him, who are some of the best guys still out there in free agency? Honestly, a lot of the better players have been signed. Uh, you know, a lot of players have been inked already uh, when you look at it. There's not a lot of really good players out there still at this point. But, you know, I think for players, I, I mean, if you count Harden, uh, I'm not sure if Andre Iguodala is going to play ever again. He might retire. TJ Warren probably is in the top five. Montrez Harrell, who also got in trouble just recently. Uh, Miles Bridges, obviously, DeAndre Ayton, obviously, uh, and then maybe Colin Sexton. That's kind of the players that I, I think probably fit right there. All right. Uh, Lil Tree says, would there be any possible way the Lakers trade LeBron? I don't think so, uh, Lil Tree. That's a good question, though. Norrin Rad, welcome to the stream. Glad to have you in here. Timothy says, hey, just got in the chat. Any news? Uh, at this point, there's been, you know, some signings today. Otto Porter Jr. signed, Bruce Brown signed. Uh, so there's been some stuff, but uh, ultimately nothing absolutely crazy that you would you think maybe shake up the world. Colts, welcome to the stream, Trayvon. Glad to have Trayvon in here. Uh, really a uh, good friend of mine. So uh, awesome to have you in here. He says, Katie to the Grizzlies. Let's get some Grizzlies hype in the chat for uh, Trayvon right now. Bucks and Six says, what do you think is the best move for the Bucks in free agency from now? On, I don't I don't think they need to make any more moves. They they were able to get Ingles, and they're at a point now where I feel like they should be pretty good with where they're at. Jared uh, says, why can't Simons be an overpaid six-man? I prefer Dame, GP, Hart, Grant, Nurk. See, that's, to be honest, what I said, and, and Blazers fans almost burned my house down uh, when I said that. They were like, bro, there's no way Simons would come off the bench. And I was like, well, this would be really good for them if they did because, you know, if they did that, like, you have your bench score. You could bring him in for Dame, and your offense doesn't take a drop. You know, like they they didn't like that idea though, Jared. Most uh, Blazers fans don't. KD said, "I think KD should embrace his role as a league villain to get another ring." And Grizz are perfect for that since they don't mind being the villains. Trayvon said, "Perfect. We already have beef with Golden State. That's awesome. Let's keep the uh, the beef rolling." Jared said, I feel like there's a lot of Blazers talk today. Like, I like it. Everyone give this man a like. Yeah, we have 308 people in here, and we're only at 216 likes. Let's get that up to 225. I'm going to be live here for another five minutes or so. Sebastian said, Katie for LeBron State straight trade. The Nets would not do that, uh, I don't think. Braithwit said, Braithwit says, I want LeBron back in Cleveland with this young core. It would be fun to watch him back there. Norman says, turn back the draft clock. Who's the better pro now, Grant Williams or PJ Washington? Obviously, I think it's Grant Williams. Uh, I think he just... Fits a little bit smoother into the league. 
uh, than PJ, but you have to understand, you know, PJ's got some talent, right? Uh, I, I think, you know, I think PJ still can be good. Uh, I wouldn't sell all the stock on PJ quite yet. KD says, yeah, Grizz need to get revenge on Golden State. This rowdy Grizz culture is more my speed. I, I like the, the Grizzlies uh, culture. I like John Morant's energy on Twitter. I, I really do. I'm glad that they uh, were able to luck into getting him. Aaron Scuda says, Blazers re-signed Nurkic, four-year, $70 million. That's one of the worst signings this offseason. They needed to keep him. He was going to be a big part of their team. But that much money is ridiculous. Uh, that is a lot of money. That is Again, that's about $17.5 million a year for him. I don't know if that is what I would do. Raul de Sousa says Lakers need a defensive leader. Yeah, and they need just more good players. Um, but that's the issue. AKKD said Grizz beating Golden State with the guy who left them would be crazy. Yes, it would. Lonnie Walker from the Spurs to the Lakers. Pretty solid signing in my opinion. The Lakers need 15 defensive players. I agree about that. Uh, Quentin wants to know any news on the KD trade. <laughs> Trayvon, clip it. I'm a clip you saying you like the Grizz. Okay. Um, I like the Grizz's culture. I like the culture of the Memphis Grizzlies. I don't necessarily like the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, for those of you, and not that I hate the Grizzlies. If you're a Grizzlies fan, don't don't say I'm a hater. Uh, I just uh, one of my one of my best friends is a big Grizzlies fan. Uh, and him and I get into uh, arguments all the time, uh, usually lighthearted, but you know, sometimes they get pretty serious. Uh, it's all in good fun though, but we uh, argue and he takes shots at my Mavericks. I take shots at his Grizzlies uh, and it's a, it's a good fun time. Galactic says, how do you feel about the Blazers getting GP two? really like Gary Payton there. Uh, I think it's a, a phenomenal move. Oh, whoa. Oh, we have a trade. We have a trade. Kevin Herter's traded. Holy cow. Okay. I thought Kevin Herter would be the odd man out. And here it is. Atlanta's trading Kevin Herter to Sacramento for Justin Holiday, Mo Harkless, and a future first round pick. Wow. We have a trade. The trade again right here. Atlanta, according to Adrian Wojnarowski, the Atlanta Hawks are trading Kevin Herter to Sacramento for Justin Holiday, Mo Harkless, and a future first round pick. This is a good trade. For Atlanta, I know right now some people are saying, "What is what are what is Atlanta doing?" This is a very good trade. They got a future first round pick for Kevin Herter. Uh, with that, with that that Herter contract, I mean, this is good. This I I prefer this for Atlanta. I know some people are saying that's a steal for Sacramento. I get what you're saying. I if you in the last decade, I'm just saying if you signed up for a future first from Sacramento in the last 15 years, you're probably sitting pretty well. So getting getting a future first for for a player in Kevin Herter who is going to be their their fourth best guard. Uh, yeah, Trayvon did meet Kevin's mom. Uh, that's awesome. Nice here move. Nice move here for Atlanta. Getting in the business. I, I like that. I like that a lot for Atlanta. Uh, I, I think Atlanta, you know, thinking about, you know, Kevin Herter's solid player, and I guess he's going to have a role there in Sacramento. Uh, are we sold that he's for sure way better than Malik Monk, who they just signed? Um, yeah, like now they have their backcourt kind of figured out, but I, I I don't I don't like this at all, really, um, for Sacramento. Like, think about this from Atlanta's perspective. When you when you think about Herder, like in Atlanta, he's not better than Trey. He's not better than Dejounte. Obviously, he's not better than McDonavich. Where's his minutes? Where are his minutes coming? He's not a point guard. He's not going to play backup point guard minutes, and he's bad defensively. Uh, like, I, I just I don't I I think this is a good trade for Atlanta. And, and right with what Galactic, what Galactic saying here is also with the picks they just got, they could use that to pursue someone. I saw somebody say that th that means the Gobert trade is dead. It's not. They they could package Capella and either you know Bogdanovich or you know they could do Capella and John Collins and you know maybe one of the young guys uh, like um, say you know Jalen Johnson or something and some first to make a deal for for Rudy. Uh, the Gobert trade is not dead. 
AKKD says Gobert to Wolves could move Cat to the four. I think Cat would dominate more as a four like Anthony Davis. I actually disagree with that. I think Kevin or uh, I think Carl Anthony Towns as a four is not as good as everyone thinks. Um, I think the issue, the Grizzlies, part of how they stopped Kevin Durant was putting Dylan Brooks on him. Uh, and and the Clippers, when they stopped Kevin Dur- or uh, Carl Anthony Towns, excuse me, uh, when they stopped Cat, was they did so by putting Nicholas Batum on him. Cat does not play well against smaller players. Playing him at the at the four, you know, it's hard. It's easier for teams to switch that way if you're going to put a small guy on him, uh, and if you can hide the big on Rudy Gobert off, uh, when you're on defense. I I feel like that works a little bit better. But I see what people are saying. I, I get the idea. I think you know defensively it helps them for sure getting a rim protector. And I, I'm a big Rudy Gobert guy. I think Rudy Gobert is really underrated. Uh, Calvin, yes, T.J. Warren is still available. Sacramento needs shooters. He's herders a good fit. Yeah, it would have been crazy if they had, I don't know, like a buddy healed or someone on the roster that they could have kept. Oh, they did. They did have one of those. Uh, and now instead of just keeping Buddy Healed, uh, they traded the stuff they got from the Buddy Healed trade with a first rounder to get Kevin Herter, who's on a somewhat similar contract and plays again, no defense. So uh Aaron Scooter, yes, I think Gallinari signing with the uh with the Celtics. Does this open up Tobias for Barnes? I don't think so. I, I ultimately don't think there's going to be any trade for Tobias. Uh, Trayvon says Kyrie to the Mavs. I don't think so, Trey. I really hope not. Um, I, I just hope not. Sebastian says, how close do you think Blazers contending uh, in the West? I, I think there's a there are ways out yet uh, in terms of actual contending. I think there are a little bit of a ways out. BP says, I think uh, Cat at the four is not good, especially on defense. He, he's he been pretty poor in D at the center spot. Imagine him having to guard stretch fours. I, I agree, but the, the thing BP is here, if he's going to get blown by, you have Rudy Gobert behind him. That, that's kind of the point here. The point is to have so much size and length behind Cat that when he gets you know obliterated, you, you just pull him away from the rim and have a new guy behind him. So it's funny. Most people are concerned about the defense and, and like the offense. I'm concerned about the offense, but I kind of like the defense, which is a little weird. I'm not in love with the defense, but I kind of like it a little bit. Matt says, you're back on again. The grind is real. I am, but I'm actually going to be wrapping up here just a little bit. I have to get going to work here uh, within an hour, so I won't be staying live for much longer. True Sports Live said, why would Cavs sign Robin Lopez already have enough centers? It's a depth signing. Uh, you know, It's another good veteran to have in the locker room, and in case of injuries, it can help them. He's someone you can you can play. Schmuddy says, Buddy Hill didn't want to be with the Kings, and he was not uh, – the good shooter, as people think he was, he was toxic in the locker room, which is why Fox regressed. Um, if De'Aaron Fox, as a grown man, feels like that Buddy Heald is is toxic and, and that hurts his play so much, maybe De'Aaron Fox is the player you don't want to build around. Uh, that's just probably my thought. <laughs> but for, for Buddy, I mean... Buddy Heald since 2017, I think, has the second most three-pointers made behind Seth, uh, behind Steph Curry. So... Uh, yeah, I, I, I get that people don't like Buddy Heald there in Sacramento. I don't really care. I think Buddy Heald is not a player that should have been salary dumped. Uh, AK KD says, I'm big on the Twin Towers concept in general. I, and I get it. I mean, the, the thing is, uh, if you're going to do something, like you might as well go in on it, right? If, if you have an idea, go for it. Like, we'll see if it works. The Kings traded the 2024 lottery protected to Atlanta. Do we know the backups on that yet? Is there any um, backup protections on it? Chris Sheridan, oh my gosh. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I I really like that for Atlanta, so I do. Um, He won the three-point contest. He's one of the top three-point shooters in the league. So was Kyle Korver, though. Uh, Juno Pierce says, Buddy is literally goaded. I like Buddy. I like Buddy. Buddy was Buddy's an ish. Buddy's not, like, great or anything, but thoughts on Raptors signing Otto Porter Jr. In my opinion, it's huge because we needed more shooting and benched out than Porter's six, eight, uh, three and D player. Yeah, he fits. He fits. Uh, where do you think Kyrie will end up? I think Lakers. What are the backup protections? I'm not sure yet. I'm looking for that right now as we speak. So let me see if we can uh, find that. I am very curious about the information on that. 2024 protected first round pick lottery protected. Pick becomes top 12 protected in 2025 and top 10 protected in 2026. Now that means the Kings can't trade their 2027 first <laughs> or their 2023 first. The, the Kings, the Kings handicap them. Oh my gosh.
that that is that is bad. That is really bad. Holy cow! Top t- top twelve in twenty twenty five and top ten in twenty twenty. Uh, top t- top ten in twenty twenty six. That that is a terrible trade for the Sacramento Kings. The the if you are a Kings fan, I am so sorry. That was a brutal trade for Sacramento. Absolutely brutal. They gave up. They gave up all their flexibility. They literally cannot trade a first now in 2024 or 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, or 2027 until that pick conveys. So that 2023 first, they can trade after they draft somebody. They could trade the draft rights to somebody. But this is bad. They they lost all their flexibility. If 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 any good player wants to go to Sacramento, which by the way they won't, but if any player ever did. They literally couldn't trade for him now because they might owe a pick to Atlanta in 2025. That this is free real. Think about this. Atlanta, Atlanta got about half, almost half back for, for DeJounte Murray by giving up Kevin Herter. You know, they gave up the, th- this is, this is insane. Th- this is insane. Like it, it's at worst one third of what the, what they gave up for DeJounte. They just got back from the Kings for Kevin Herter. That is brutal. That is brutal. Holy cow, Travis Schlank. I, I mean the Queens. Yeah, the Sacramento Queens. Holy cow. ITK, that's awesome. That's hilarious that you said that. Uh, Quinton, yeah, that's what I said about the Dinwiddie and, and Bertans trade. Uh, and guess what? Spencer Dinwiddie shot 36% from the field in the playoffs. So uh, I don't know why everyone thinks that Dinwiddie's the player that put the Mavs in, into the Western Conference Finals. Uh, clearly, they watched the playoffs with their eyes closed because Spencer Dinwiddie was at best the maybe fifth best Maverick. If you think Kristaps Porzingis wouldn't have been more impactful for Dallas this postseason, you're just flat out wrong. True Sports Live says Atlanta's controlling the NBA, just won two trades. Yes, they. this was, again, really good management from Travis Schlenk. Uh, again, I'm very high on his decision making, uh, and he makes a lot of good decisions. And I think Travis Schlenk here made another good one. Uh, Schmuddy, let's not, uh, be doing that. Why am I, I'm hating because you guys, okay. Okay. Let's, let's talk about Kevin Herter. Okay. Oh boy. (laughs) That's, that's funny. That's really funny to me that I didn't know there were so many Kevin Herter stands in the chat. Uh, if I knew that I would have, you know, really been all for it. The guy averaged 12 points a game last year. Um, by the way, uh, you traded a a future first and, (sighs) I, I don't know. Justin Holiday, by the way, does about 70% of what Kevin Herter does and is a better defender. You want to tell Kevin Herter's a good three point shooter. Yeah, he shot 39% from three this past year. Let's see uh, what Justin Holiday is for a career three point percent shooter. Uh, Justin Holiday in his career, by the way, Justin Holiday is only making $6 million this year, which is under half of what Kevin Herter's making. Uh, yeah, for his career, Justin Holiday shoots 36.5% from three this past year. Again, shot 37% from three and averaged 10 points a game, by the way. Uh, yes, Kevin, Holiday doesn't do as much with the ball in his hands. Um, I'm telling you right now, if you need Kevin Herter to do a lot with the ball in your hands, you're probably not going to win a ton of games. Sacramento misses the postseason again. Kings fans can stay mad about it. Uh, and that's uh, always the uh, the fun part here. <laughs> Herter was a dog last year. Okay. If he was a dog, Atlanta wouldn't have been willing to give him up. BP says, it's amazing how a guy can have so much knowledge and give out great info and fools still find a way to insult him. Uh, amazing ego some people have. Well, part of it is because if their favorite team does something, uh, if their favorite team does something and I disagree with it, they think I'm dumb. Just because they they think that their favorite team doesn't make any mistakes, but their favorite team happens to be the one that traded 21-year-old Tyrese Halliburton for 26-year-old DeMontis Sabonis and then traded... Um, now a first round pick and Justin Holiday and Mo Harkless, who are two solid NBA players uh, and a, and a first that limits all of their future flexibility to, to, to get Kevin Herter. I, I mean, that's insane. Joshua Barrero says who had more minutes though. Uh, Justin Holiday was playing. This past season, he played about 27 minutes a game. Uh, and Kevin Herter, let's see what Kevin Herter played. Kevin Herter this past year played 29 minutes a game. So Herter averaged two more points in two more minutes and shot 2% better from three uh, and is a worse defender. Uh, I'm sorry, but 
Herder is just not worth a first round pick. And the issue, the issue here, uh, it seems like I'm lagging a little bit. Hold on. Um, the issue here is they traded, not only did they trade a first round pick, but they traded a pick that has two lottery, like two protection backups on it, which means now if the Kings wanted to make any more moves, the closest thing that they can trade is a 2023 pick swap, which doesn't have value, really. Well, maybe it does because it's Sacramento. Maybe it does because I would sign up for a, a swap with Sacramento. I would go ahead and do that for sure. Um, a 2027 pick swap. Otherwise, the next unprotected pick that they can trade, the next time, the next pick that they have available to trade for any player is 2028. We are talking about a draft that is like seven drafts from now. This is bad. This is bad. Uh, this is what we're going to end the stream on today, guys. Kings fans, stay mad. All the other fans, keep laughing at Sacramento. It's another one of those days. Uh, I was live on trade deadline day when they traded Halliburton. Couldn't believe it then. Still can't believe it now. And now I'm at a point where they gave up a first-round pick for uh, Kevin Herter. So, uh, you know, I like Monty McNair. I think Monty McNair is a really good drafter. I think Keegan Murray was a solid pickup. The Kings are going to be better next season than they've been in a while. But Oh my goodness. This is this is a yikes for uh this is a yikes for the Kings. If you're a Kings fan and you're not you're not uh you know super upset, I'm sorry, Kings fans. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it's a it's an unfortunate turn of events. Smash that like button one more time. <laughs> Make sure to uh <laughs> Timothy says your next available pick is for a current 12-year-old. <laughs> Literally, that's the next pick that they could uh they could use in a trade unprotected. So absolutely crazy. Hopefully you guys did enjoy today's live stream. Again, I, I wish I could stay live for longer. Uh, I, I would love to. I mean, it's been a really great stream. You guys are all so awesome. <laughs> you guys are you guys are honestly the best. The the comments were they were so used. Dub says we're used to it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Dub. Uh, peace again, guys. Take it easy. Thanks for all stopping in here. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Go follow on Instagram. Links in the description and Twitter. Go follow. Huge shout outs to you guys all again for hanging out in here. Thanks so much, and we'll catch you guys in the very next Utility Sports video.